AC and the Galactic Soul, the Honorable Brother, the Revolutionary Yourself, Darius Lockhart, and I'm here to tell you to watch Power Bomb Shells every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern on the Fight Game Media YouTube channel. That's right, every Sunday at 1 p.m., and that's on time, every time, because when we stand together, what time is it? That's right, it's nation time. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 111 of Power Bombshells. I am Sam, that is Mel. We are just two broads talking about the wrestling that we watch, and we are glad to have you here with us. Hey guys, welcome and, to the party. And uh, we had a guess early on uh, about what your hat would be, and it was nowhere close. <laughs> Daza said he reckoned a yellow cowboy, cowboy hat. Nope. <laughs> You know, this seemed like the week for this. I've been planning on using one sooner or later. Plus, considering everything that's going on, I need to have one of these. This is like, I told Bob, I was like, this serves two purposes. I get to use it on the, the show, and now I'm protected going forward. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Yeah. You're you're all prepared. <laughs> I just wonder what my Google algorithm thinks when I think, I'm like, Tin hat tip tutorial, tin foil hat tutorials. <laughs> I love it. it I has, knew this was gonna happen. Daza said we're on opposite sides and it's freaking him out. <laughs> oh shoot! I'm sorry. Oh it's no! Okay. Nope, you added yourself right? first. There we go. Ah, that better. <laughs> oh, there you go. Holy crap! It's a quick fix, everyone. I. It's hard for me to notice. Sometimes I just forget. <laughs> All right, there we go. I'm on the right side now. You're like, no way. Oh, my God. Jeremy said, I just saw an ad for tinfoil hats for cats, and I think I know how I got snagged in the algorithm. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Anytime. I'm glad. To... I'm always here to help, Jeremy. That's why we love the Power of Shells and my crazy hat. This was a week, man. There were a lot of, like, Especially with the, the, I mean, we're going to get to it, obviously, but I was like, I'm going to have to roll it out sooner or later. And this just seemed like the week. Why not? And now you always have it on hand because yeah. I'm sure we're going to need it. Oh, my God. <laughs> More than okay. once, considering how this insane business is. <laughs> I'm Well, not. I mean, frankly, I might just wear this thing around. You know what? You might You're as welcome, well. welcome, Daza. Protect, it just protect, makes more sense. Protect yourself. <laughs> Protect yourself and the people you love. This, folks, you've got this in your closet, okay? Most people have this just right on hand. The brain you save could be your own. <laughs> this is true. This is true. <laughs> I was reading wow. some, I saw some, I was making sure there wasn't any breaking news that we needed to discuss because I got uh, something just came across and it's nothing important and well i guess it is important apparently there was uh some concern that julia hart got injured during her uh -huh. match the other night and she did not she is advertised for um she's advertised for this week so she appears to be okay because uh, her match on rampage ended abruptly and people were concerned that she was injured uh so apparently she is not and so that was one. it was just a bunch of different notes i was scanning through it making sure it was nothing we needed to, to talk about no, you get that super inbox stuff i have to like watch your uh <laughs> Your tweeter, because <laughs> oh, here we go. Jeremy says Bolton Oleg is the champion. Top news. I did catch that on the uh, I missed socials. that somewhere so along the line. I I caught nice. that. So yeah, that's good stuff. They need to start pushing some of their better guys. I mean, they. Yes, yes. I agree. I, yes, but yeah. So yeah. that was one of the things, and then it was just like other random notes. That's nothing of. And, and there's nothing that we really need to talk about. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> I yeah, just wanted yeah. to make sure I was like, hold on, it's <laughs> like, let me make sure we're not getting some breaking news over here. Other than most, Bolton, most that everything we're news. caught up on. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, no, the old, like, yeah, that's great. That's fantastic. I'm excited. Okay. They've done a lot of good things this week. Good, good Jeremy job. said, never six man tournament in Taiwan wrestling world 2024, I think. Oh, you know what? And I saw, um, Na was it Nagata? that tweeted about being there i think it was yeah i think it was nagata had tweeted that he was there um that he had made it in and it was like the day before the match or something like that i'm pretty sure it was nagata that hmm. tweeted that so interesting right on yeah and we'll have some i have a couple of I, I need to catch up on that ddt show that zach saber was on john was telling me i about. have not got didn't get to any i didn't get to ddt and i didn't get to i haven't got to effie's big gay brunch yet i guess and, there 
is I didn't yeah, know. I'm behind on I know. I'm behind I need and then get, of course I need to get to that kennel match too that uh was on the most recent uh Noah show. So right. And I just, then I know that there were I don't have I think the WrestleCon stuff is on IWTV and I don't have <laughs> IWTV anymore. And that was the mat that's the one that had uh the Marcus Mathers Dragon Kid match that everybody was talking about. And so I've got to figure out a way to well, I gotta write that. I need to make a <laughs> I know, I know, I know someone that you know who could probably help you out with that. Okay. He... <clears throat> okay. Sounds yeah. good. Um, and I need to. Well, we'll and get. You won't to... even have to fight a sumo wrestler for it. Well, thank goodness. I don't want to have to fight Akibano, Akibono's you, ghost. You or him anymore. <laughs> you know, you hear stories about someone, and you're like, that makes so much sense. <laughs> that's, hey, that's on brand. It's totally. <laughs> Like exactly, exactly what? Yeah, I mean, and just if you don't know what I'm referencing, just go check out Mike and JD show for Voices of Wrestling because you know we totally hate each other all across these of wrestling course. speakers. Yes, and uh, so that's why we promote each other and listen to each other's shows all the time. <laughs> and also, whenever you get a chance to check out Twitter, I don't, Nikki was promote was telling people to listen to our show and the gift that she used was fantastic. I just retweeted it from her. Oh, so. shoot. I'm going to have to check that out. I can't, like, pop off of everything. <laughs> 10 being... out of 10. No notes. Thank you for that, Nikki. <laughs> Nick, Nikki, and you actually, both of you are excellent gif gifers. Uh, I'm glad. Exactly. Or jiffers, depending on, you know, your preference. Uh, it's, it's gift for me. <laughs> I'm a gifer, but... I'm it's, a gift as well. You know, uh, they're both no right. No disrespect to the person who created it, but no, but see, here's the problem is that if you asked a asked a linguist, they would tell you they're both right. So that's who I defer to. Here. It was funny because the other day in one of the slacks, we were we were watching SmackDown and or, no, it was Raw, and they were like something about woes in the chat for Cody, and every single one of them except me spelled woe incorrectly because obviously it's W H O A, but most people spell it W O A H, and every single one of them spelled it that way except me, and mine was the only one spelled. And I'm like, listen, that is the proper way to spell it, and I'm I'm sorry, but that's the correct way. <laughs> That's, you know, it's, I am not going to change how to spell it just because most people spell it the way it sounds. <laughs> again, they'd both be right, but also. <laughs> yeah, and it was funny. Cool people, because I went, when I was going to college, I wasn't like editing. That was like my work. Right. What I was into were like writing press releases and editing. I got a job editing on the paper, like. Mm -hmm. And I did that in high school and I did that on websites or like early on in my podcasting stuff. So it was like, I did, I cannot stop with the Oxford comma. Like, no, I will. No, I'm team Oxford comma all the way. I will I, never it's not. Something that I can't, it's, I think for my, for someone my age, it's, it's always period with two spaces and it's always an Oxford comma. Before yeah, I'll, I'm always team Oxford comma forever. I just, always. It's, it is what it is. <laughs> it was funny because Miriam Webster is, if you don't, I don't know if you follow them on Twitter, they are always on point with like stuff and like they were talking about how uh, the topic of woe came up and somebody in the chat was like you can't just say that it's this because um even the, they were like language changes and most people spell it the op you know w-o-a-h and i was like why are you arguing with a dictionary's twitter account <laughs> relax they're just telling you the proper way <laughs> they're just giving you the what we have as like what the language scientists have agreed on is the proper formatting like that's a group right. of that's by consensus folks it's just like any other science it's a social science instead of a physical or a G, whatever right. science <laughs> so it's go google esperanto sometime you'll learn a whole lot like language <laughs> is very important and dangerous so they yes and i think it is. no i actually it's i haven't I, they keep showing up on my timeline probably because of the stuff I nerd out to, and I do need to just follow them because you're absolutely right. They're very, yeah, they're like, always, they're on, they're really on topic, which is really funny. Like they will, I mean, they'll tell you like random, like things you need to know, but they are very much in paying attention to popular culture and yes. what's happening and will always like 
weigh in with something it's they're great i love that i can't they're, smart. they're teachers or people that know that they, that's how you get through to people is by using the context of what's going on on social right. media to teach kids and yeah keep, and right. adults honestly there's plenty yeah. of adults who need that kind of guidance yeah because they didn't have it or they Adult. forgot or they were, or they learn or they learn differently so right. yes uh, having a different form is a great way to do it and also i want to pop this comment from jeremy Definitely. up here <laughs> it's a difference of your next <laughs> which popped me thank you all right <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that <laughs> i love you too. speaking of janet jackson is coming here in a few months she we saw nikki and i actually went to see her it's like four or five summers ago we went to see her and it was amazing and it was she sang i was like she just she sang so much like everything she like went through all of her catalog which was great and it was a lot of fun i could i'd be interested in that show like i wouldn't necessarily pay the dynamic pricing but also if someone was like hey do you want to do this yeah like, we Jeff leopard is coming here and that was my first concert ever i was 10 years nikki, old like i love Def leopard but nikki is a, was like a was a really big um Def Leppard fan and that movie do you remember did you watch the VH1 movie that they did on them oh my god we have watched that movie so many times <laughs> I, I had the giantest crush on Joe Elliott and I just like so I went to see them when I was 10 and then I noticed that they were coming back around here like wouldn't it be funny if you like went full circle after all these decades yeah and it's actually cool. hilarious because they've got like it's like Steve Miller band and somebody else. And I was like, oh, isn't that the most <laughs> adorably it like mid to late 80s wonderfulness ever? It's it's like a VH1 or an MTV concert just right in front of me. I was like, yeah, we um Daza said I'm a massive Death Leopard fan. See them three times in Sheffield, once oh. in Seattle and once in Vegas. Amazing. Hi. Yeah, I saw I was looking at the I was looking at the calendar the other day. Um to see like just what concerts were coming. And I saw that Hootie and the Blowfish was coming in September. And then I didn't look to see who they were coming with. And then I saw it later and it's Hootie and the Blowfish, Collective Soul and Edwin McCain. And I was like, <laughs> I would like to go to this show. And then also Creed is coming this summer and I would love to go to Creed. I can't, I don't think I can convince Nikki to go with me to see Creed because I loved them. I was, I loved Creed when they were and now they're becoming popular again finally and now i can now i can now i can freely admit it but <laughs> everything like, everything will is new again that's what happened that's i true. saw hootie back in the day actually you know i never which is surprising i loved hootie and they're from columbia so they're like right down the street and so then, but i've never i've never seen them before and i was like uh, and i didn't get to go a lot but they always because they're so close because it's a, they're in the carolinas the show they always sell out and so i was like i don't know if i can get i don't know if tickets are even i don't know if they're available but i was like i would love to go see hootie love we have a in maine down in southern maine it's called old orchard beach there's a ball ball field there and i don't know i'm sure it's like advanced now i mean it's been a long time but that's where everyone would play if they did come around and it was always in the summer because that's when people come to maine because right we're a vacation state so of course <laughs> that's i saw meatloaf there twice we saw hootie and the blowfish yeah, I loved that. nikki and i loved meatloaf <laughs> well my sister won primus tickets from the radio station uh -huh. she was camping it and she wanted to go so bad and <laughs> she won the tickets but when she got to the place they didn't have her ticket so they comped her anything she wanted to see else later which was a big bummer so she didn't get to see primus although i think she <laughs> did get to see them eventually like when she was overseas or something or like that but well, then good. at least she got to see him we so we went it went Meatloaf, Hootie and the Blowfish, and we liked Meatloaf so much because it was such a great stage show that we went again to see if it like. Oh, I can imagine later that he was awesome live, dude. Because he put on, he was like a real. He actually did opera and he did all that stuff. So his stage show was always, and the gal that he sang with for all those years, they were great. Like it was. That's yeah. some of the best concert I've seen, and he I, was I, really I consistent. I mean, this yeah. is all in the late nineties, mid to late nineties, and. And I've seen Dave Matthews the most, which I'll shock yeah, nobody. Yeah, he Dave comes like 
nearly every summer it seems like well, he's every time also a from down here, isn't he from your area too he's from virginia oh okay yeah and then i yeah i have my co-worker is a huge uh dave fan and he's in south carolina so he comes up to charlotte every time yeah. to see him <laughs> so <laughs> we saw, um, let's see, so, i saw them in foxwoods massachusetts i saw them in virginia in like uh southern virginia and then I saw them three more times out in Washington State at the Gorge. So <laughs> Bob and I, Bob and I were, uh, yeah. <laughs> Nikki said she fucking loves meatloaf, not his political opinions. Yeah, me neither. No, no, um, no, no. And I wish we got to see him. And then so I have to go back to this conversation. So Nikki right. said she's not a Creed hater, but she doesn't go out of her way. And Jeremy said that Nikki needs to embrace Creed with arms wide open. I get <laughs> it. It's hard, but we need to finish the story. <laughs> And yes, Daza, Creed, he said, wasn't it Creed that did my sacrifice that they used, uh, used to have on WWE TV back in 2001? Yes, they did. Yes. <laughs> it's better than being Linkin Park fan because that's, we got that stupid Roland song. And if I never hear that song. Ever, oh, no, that wasn't mm -hmm. Linkin Park. That's uh, Roland was uh, Limp Biscuit. Or not Linkin Park. You're right. Um, that's what I meant. Limp Biscuit. Limp Biz, that's what we got. And then that's Limp what led into Biscuit. You've got to say it right. Limp Biscuit. Yes. Biz also. Speaking of Limp Bizkit, I now I always think of Sunny Kiss, and Sunny Kiss loves Limp Bizkit, and Sunny Kiss I will be seeing on Friday. <laughs> it's just that Fred Durst is so weird. So yes, he's weird. from here. He's from he's from Gastonia. He's from like forty five minutes away. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Maybe he's that guy. Yeah, that. But that was the um, WrestleMania nineteen song. Yes. And we yeah. saw it on the TV, and we heard it at the venue, and I mean, it was. Madness. Yes, John Silver is also a huge Limp Bizkit fan. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right then. Well, yeah, because this is the all right. So you have to go see Limp Bizkit and she has to go see Creed. We fixed it. <laughs> I don't think we have to wait. I didn't get how am I getting roped into Limp Bizkit? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> but I, I'm surprised. He, I don't, do they even tour anymore? I don't think so because i think he kind of lost. i feel like his... didn't fred durst like completely change his like he looks completely different yeah now. i think, like, he, I I think like... he kind of lost his um i think he wasn't wearing his tinfoil hat properly and some things went on with him so yeah i think so we just Daza said he's discovered so many bands through wrestling like hailstorm yeah, yeah definitely it's, it's because of the like especially with like metal and like hair and butt rock like they're so much like pro wrestling in their way. It's there. It, it shouldn't shock anybody that Chris Jericho has a freaking like hairband, basically. Like oh a yeah, twenty first century throwback butt rock <laughs> band. I mean, it's come on, that's what they are. <laughs> well, and now it's like <laughs> Jerry said, finish the story, Sam. Listen, oh. if that finishing the story means seeing Creed for the first time, then that is the story that I would like to. I would like to be and Nikki apparently would rather see, see Limp Bizkit and so well that's a different story <laughs> let's see maybe you'll get lucky they'll both be on the same show and you can both get what you want these bands <laughs> Jeremy do to what about <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremy is Fozzie? a very punny person and I love it we love it Daza saw Fozzie and Sheffield and they were good I Nikki and I, I saw go. Nikki and I saw Fozzie like right when the, he first started and he was playing a local venue here. It was a small venue, but it was like right when they got started and it wasn't bad from what I remember, but that's how we met Jericho for the first time. And I have a picture with him somewhere. This is before I found about all the other stuff about sure. Jericho, but, we have friends <laughs> but Nikki, like and I were, Nikki and I were always Jericho fans. Like I love Jericho, but Nikki was like, Nikki was the bigger Jericho fan. And so like, that's why we went. And so Nikki and I, there's, I have a picture with him somewhere. Nikki has a picture with him somewhere. And that's where we saw him. Like we saw him obviously wrestle. We've seen him a few times yeah. in, in WWE. And then, um, and then Fozzie came to town when they, it was like I think it was like one of their first tours. I feel like they came through here because some of his band members are in um, what the hell's that? Nikki might remember the name of their band, and they used to play here fairly often. And my, my a friend, a former friend of ours, we were uh, knew them like knew the other band, and so that was one of the reasons she wanted. Well, she liked Jericho too, but she wanted to go because she knew some of the band members, and so that's how we ended up going to see them. So, yes. I recently found out we have friends that go 
when they come around. So I'm like, oh, wow. next time they come around, let me know. If it's something that's not like totally unreasonable, I'd go to that with friends. <laughs> that is right. Jericho is wearing a Three's Company shirt in our pictures. Nikki that's and I awesome. Love, Nikki and I love Three's Company. We watch it all the time. <laughs> I love that they still have like Nick at Night channel and stuff that you can watch that kind of thing. I think on. it's, has it, no, not Logo. One of those, there's a show that shows that there's a channel that shows it during the day that we have. And they show like, I think course, I have like, that channel. If they're not like, showing Golden the Girls, <laughs> which we watch a lot of too, because we've oh, seen, man, we've seen all of them. Sometimes, Golden Girls is sometimes is one of those shows that's on like in the background, like while we're doing other stuff. And because you've seen like, them yeah. all the episodes so yeah. many times. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. And then there's, the, or they show them on like two or three channels and they'll have just shown this episode like on that other channel like two weeks ago. I'm like, I just saw this episode. <laughs> I've been watching The Office a lot on Comedy Central for random reasons. They show it at just, a, just the right time for me to either have it on in the background or what I didn't watch it religiously. Like I followed it, but didn't watch it religiously when it was popular. But I did like the show and I liked the original that. So it was like, it's way more inappropriate now than it even was back <laughs> when it started. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes you really are like, oh my God. Oh, it's just like, <laughs> yeah. You're like, how did this? Yeah, definitely. And it was only in the aughts, but I'm just like, whoa, things have changed a f- Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lot. There's some stuff that you go back and you hear and you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> It's just like Did even I worse. Think- and I know that that was the point at the time, but now because yeah. of the way that things have evolved language wise, it's <laughs> yeah. It goes back it's to our fascinating conversation. We but have a request. Funny. From, we have a request from Miguel to, uh, to no wrestling talk today. Please enjoy this conversation too much. <laughs> we have to do some <laughs> wrestling talk. <now. laughs> Listen, I'm sure we could have topics where we could just crowdsource topics to talk about, like we've Absolutely. apparently we've been doing so far. <laughs> well, Which everyone loves I binging. Love- I I think binging TV, like like watching TV shows over and over again, especially for like I don't know if anyone does that now, but because we had regular TV back in the day with ads where we would do that and watch the same episodes over and over. Right. I think that that's there's something like. I don't know, comforting in that. So yeah. I do it with shows that maybe I haven't seen all of and wanted to catch up on. It's like I saw a big chunk of them that I had never seen before. And it was like interesting to me. And Dwight yeah. versus Jim is always a good time. So <laughs> <laughs> those are some of the like most hilarious. I mean, the show pops me like legit sometimes, like all the time. So I'm like, yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm good with this. Yeah. <laughs> Daza said we can we talk about GoBots. Then he said we should talk about X Men ninety seven. I've I don't watch. Uh, I've heard X Men ninety seven. I see a lot of conversation about it in my timeline, especially from JD and Mike Gilbert, <laughs> who I think they're both watching what it. And I think awesome. Several other people in my are are in my timeline are watching it as well. Um, just comic the X Men stuff is like that's just not anything I've ever gotten into, but I hear yeah. everybody from the consensus I see is everybody loves it. They think it's the best thing ever. And apparently the most recent episode is the best one yet. <laughs> it was very mind blowing. Like I, it's, I watched the nineties one and then Bob like rewatched the entire series. And then before he would let us, cause everyone was talking about it and I wanted to go watch it. And he's like, no, I'm rewatching the nineties one. I'm like, Okay, so I waited, <laughs> and then we've been mostly caught up now because we've been watching them in real time the last two weeks. Oh, nice! And they're awesome. Like they've, I really like what they've done with taking like the b- parts of the stuff that was good out of the '90s ones and bringing it to the new one. And I mean, from what I understand, because I didn't read the comic books, I got a lot of my information from the stories that were on like the t- cartoons and stuff. So I only knew a little bit about it, but from what I understand, they're continuing and closer than most other X-Men properties to the oh, nice. actual comic books, which is no fun wonder for people, fans. No wonder because, people seem to like it so much. <laughs> well, and it's smart because they finally, Marvel finally owns the mutants again. So they mm-hmm. own the X-Men. So they're going to be introducing and have been slowly introducing them into their live action properties. So gotcha. 
That I sense. could absolutely see this being a really good. First of all, like I don't know like what age I would necessarily say because it's some strong stuff. But at the same time, it was like when we were kids, we watched some pretty intense cartoons. Sometimes. Sure. Yeah. So I'm like. It's not talking down to you. So if you're like a tween or something and watching it, it is like good. So I it's but it'll definitely help tie in, I think, to the TV and, uh, you know, the big screen stuff. Cause, oh, awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. I mean, it, that's Jeremy says X-Men 97 better than 90 percent of wrestling right now. It's. I don't know 90 percent, but it's definitely up in the 80s or something i mean does that said the most recent episode rivals the red wedding game of thrones episode yeah pretty jeremy, much jeremy concurs and then he said starting to take element jeremy said starting to take elements of the 80s and 2000s and it's wild and then he says x-men 97 is exceedingly horny <laughs> nice <laughs> Well, some of wrestling is exceedingly horny, so it's it's good. <laughs> and this one, I think that's a good comparison, actually. The Red Wedding episode. I saw a few people using that uh, analogy, and I was a big Game of Thrones fan too. So this is that's that all my jam. One thing I never got into. Like I think we didn't have HBO at the time, and then we always were like, we'll go back and watch it, and then we never did. And then and then I for a while I thought I would read the books first and then that, that never happened. So <laughs> just actually, never you know what? Do yourself a favor. Don't make yourself angry. Just watch the show because he hasn't finished this series. Oh, I, I've heard he has not finished the story. <laughs> and I have extreme beef with George Martin, so we won't go there. <laughs> Daza says as a kid he watched Watership Down and that's violent as hell. Yes, that is a great example. A lot of us use that one. Um, that is like the most horrifying movie. And all of us saw it. We saw that. We saw Old Yeller. We saw like. Oh, yeah. Old Yeller for. Yeah. <laughs> I thought <laughs> Labyrinth was kind of scary as a kid. It, like, you know, I, me that's, out a little. that's a movie that I. Labyrinth is something that I've never seen, which is because at now, like maybe at the. I don't know if it's just because I didn't have access to it or like my parents. Like, I don't know why I never saw it. But then, like, from the little bit I know about it, I was like, this is like right up my alley. It seems it's like it's got this David the, Bowie in it, honey. Yeah. I was like, this seems like goblins and oh, yeah. You I was like, this it. seems you like and something like that I would have enjoyed. Like, I don't know why I didn't have access to it and or why I didn't know about it. I didn't, I don't think, I feel like I didn't know about it until I was older. And I don't know why that is. And then, so I guess in the, maybe like people in my school like weren't watching it like you know it's not like a word of mouth type of thing either like I don't know if or if maybe people were watching it and they just weren't talking about it or that type of thing it but might yeah, have that, been a little young like it you might have been a little younger than it it might have been maybe, a little older than maybe you. that's what it is because yeah I've never might have like been a little older than you so it might have been like VHS and then they would right. maybe show it on cable I remember watching it a lot on like the under like the low stations and the like yeah. mid afternoon on a Saturday. <laughs> right. Or yeah. That kind yeah. of stuff. Like that's that makes sense. When they showed Beastmaster and things like that. So it was, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean <laughs> Jeremy, is this about watership down? Is that what this is a reference to? Or is this a reference to something else? The dude had a love child with his. Oh, his oh, wife. oh! He's talking about X Men. Oh, okay. It's this he's talking about X Men. Yes. Okay. Hey, yeah. Wow. It's, All yeah. right. <laughs> that's and that's like kind of a B plot. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Daza says in our shop, uh, "When is the Winds of Winter coming out?" Was asked every week by customers. I have not heard that question for over a year. Well, finally, Yikes. they stopped asking you because you can just stop telling them. Yes, that's one of Bob's favorites, Beastmaster. <laughs> he had a white German Shepherd, which we also had at one point, so that was really cute. I was Amazing. like, wait a minute, <laughs> nerd. It turns out he was a great dog, though. So, I mean, fantastic, super sweet. White, they're, they're very extra sensitive, but they're very sweet. The, yes. The doggies, so. But, I mean, that's like, most doggies. But, yes, I mean, 
<laughs> obscure movie obscura and uh and comic <laughs> book <and> tv show <laughs> so. well i said you know we've already had one request to not talk about wrestling so <laughs> well, as much as I would like for that to happen. There's some good wrestling that we're going to talk about. There is some. And we were, we've we got Ashe. Nikki and I have Ashe coming up on Friday. And we'll we talk can, about that yeah. a little bit, too. So I'm excited about that. I'm very excited. And I'm trying to figure out. Well, I'll I'll save that for the Ashe conversation. And we'll get, <laughs> we'll get to it. But <laughs> All right. This is uh, if you're tuning out for the wrestling portion, we apologize. And hopefully we at least entertained you for the first half an hour. <laughs> Before we get into the wrestling stuff. I was just going to say, now we're going to do what we're actually advertised as doing. I mean, we, we, just, know, put, we just put John Moxley on here just to see if you would click on it. media. We, we got all of those. There you go. See? <laughs> we covered the game and the media portion. Right. Because the media and the music, well, that can count. And we covered the game and media portion. And, and, so. and cartoons and all that other stuff, too. There we go. See? see? Now we're getting now, to the fight part. <laughs> and i um i am gonna fight triple h and mel is gonna fight tony khan so there we go <laughs> yeah. let's get this triple h i actually yeah. downloaded a quote for you from the observer that made your exact point so once you uh perfect get rolling i will read that to you yes I so <laughs> We talked a little bit about Mania last week because we had gotten through Saturday and I was having to watch. I mean, I probably would have watched Mania anyway. Most of you know I'm only watching WWE because I cover it uh, for a website on Mondays and Fridays. So I have been sucked into having to to watch it. And I will say Monday's episode, minus the first 45 minutes, uh, which was commercial free promo stuff um most of the show was actually pretty solid had some good stuff in it there are things that i like about it. i don't completely like i'm not hate watching it there are things that i do enjoy mostly it's getting to see the wrestlers that i like uh which is always nice <laughs> that's been on the one well thing like i've talked about it before when i wasn't watching wwe regularly like i miss watching kevin owens kevin owens is one of my favorites and so i've really enjoyed being able to to see him and listen to him because he's really funny and uh, but yeah so <laughs> WrestleMania obviously was last weekend. We have Monday Night Raw or Raw After Mania. Be exciting. And it was just, it felt like most of this weekend was a big advertisement for Triple H. It was just, I, I get, like, I understand you have to separate yourself from Vince. Like, I get what they're doing with the public. They, they, Triple H is somebody that most wrestling fans know they're comfortable with. They, trust him to an extent like character wise like he's somebody that's always been around he's been behind the scenes uh when obviously when vince was gone originally he took over creative and the bar was on the floor so he could do the bare minimum and people praised him like he was the greatest thing ever and i'm not saying triple h did some good stuff so i'm not completely downing him but let's just be real the the bar was on the ground because WWE was in a rough spot the, to the point where I quit watching it. <laughs> like, it was bad. And so I get, like, using Triple H, but it just, it felt like it was just, it was the Triple H hour. Like, he was, he's coming out to his music. He's, like, opening the shows and coming out Welcome to WrestleMania, which somebody pointed out is because they were changing the sound bite so that it's not Vince anymore. It's Triple H now. Again, uh -huh. I understand what they're doing. I understand that you have to publicly separate yourself from this man. Completely get it. Then Sunday, we got home a little late because it was my dad's birthday, and so we didn't see we were like, we turned it on in like 20 minutes late. So we missed them bringing out Stephanie. And I was like, she's, in, she's been, we know she's in the lawsuit. Like we know she's corporate officer number three. This is a choice to bring her out. And uh, this is her first public appearance since we found out that she is in the lawsuit. Like these are some choices we are making here. And then Monday night, well, no, actually before we even get to Monday night. So then the main event happens, Cody finishes story. Thank God. It was great. It was a little over, a little overbooked for me, a little too much with the John Cena and the whatever. It's fine. It was fun. Then Cody's like, I'm going to bring, they're going to get mad at me. I'm going to bring Triple H out here. Then he's like, let's bring out Bruce Pritchard. And I was like, what the fuck are you doing, Cody? <laughs> Ronda Rousey just said <laughs> this man yep. is. Was Vince's Vince's avatar, avatar. While he is gone. Like you were bringing out Vince's inner circle. Like, what are you doing? Then he goes out to the crowd and he's like hungering the cameraman. He hugs Nick Khan. And I was like, 
what is happening? Like, this is, I don't, was this planned? Like, are we trying, like, what are you doing? Because once this, like, once this goes to court, these people are probably going to be subpoenaed and you're going to have to like edit out all this footage from like the Cody's going to win and he's going to hand the belt to his mom. And it's just like going to cut off because like, yeah, but if I was Ann Callis, I'd be taking, making sure oh. that I uh, had all that stuff. Cause it got yeah. broadcast and it was live and yeah, I, I, I'm hoping. Yeah. I'm sure she's on it, but I was just like, these are, these are some, if they want to keep doing that sort like, of thing, because so, that establishes so they, like later on, if this does go to court, that looks like that's familiarity. That's, yeah, I mean, Cody's it's a politician. showing that the work environment it's, is the, the core people of that work environment from the lawsuit are right here on TV. Like, well, they're except for I think the, the corporate officer number two, as far as I know, was never on TV on Sunday, but corporate officer number one and three were Bruce Pritchard was out there, and then Triple H, who is the son in law of the person named the lawsuit. Besides being married to corporate officer number three. Right. Like, I was just like, these are some really wild choices. So you're either being really, really bold. You don't understand the gravity of the situation. Or somebody pointed out to me that they thought it almost felt like a a last, like they know this is the last time they're all going to be together because things are going to be changing within the year. Like as more things come out. If the feds decide to, you know, bring charges, if they start subpoenaing, uh, sending subpoenas out and things like that. So, which I guess is possible. It just, it, to me, felt very tone deaf and just very. It was, and I really I, liked your article that you wrote. I think I retweeted thank it. You. If not, we retweeted it from our account, but it popped yeah. up Monday. And I was like, thank you. I'm not the only one. Like, as soon as you're that, I was like, oh, good. Because. The whole thing felt like, let's simp for Triple H, like, the entire weekend. And I was like, what is happening right now? So I went through the same thing. And, of course, my thing didn't download the quote. But Dave Meltzer, I'm going to paraphrase him, put it right in the Observer. He was like, this weekend was about Paul Levesque, and they wanted you to know it. And yeah. if you missed it, this – and he kind of had, like, a whole quote that summed up. And I'll find it and send it if I can, if yeah. I can quote it out of there. But he essentially said what you said, where it was like, in case you missed it, Paul Levesque. Like, yeah, yeah just like I mean, it kind of already started with like what, what, you know, we talked about last week, kind of started up with it leading to. So Paul Levesque is like making the media rounds. He'd taken shots at AEW, taken shots at Will Ospreay instead of focusing on his own, your biggest show of the year. So he's like, don't look, don't bring up that Vince letter that came out on Monday. Let's take shots yes. at Will <laughs> like that. So it started then. But then it you works. Have, it works I, with their people. And I didn't, I didn't watch the Hall of Fame, but you have Paul Heyman coming out oh, saying it's the Triple H stuff. era or the Paul Levesque era. And I'm like, here we go. And so that kind of started it and it made me think, so, you know, and I, I brought it up on Sunday, but we talked, so Saturday or not Saturday, or uh, Thursday or Friday, there's that clip of Michael Cole and it's just the clip of him saying Dick Ryder. And I was like, I said that Michael Cole clip, just play it all weekend because that's exactly what's happening. We are, they are just being Triple H Dick Riders. For three whole days, yes. like he comes up, he someone opened. called Jim Valley and a Tony Condick writer this week, and and that was part of why he was so un unhappy. So that's <laughs> so, so funny that keeps that what that's a popular phrase this week. It is a popular phrase, and I can. But yeah. I mean, that's what they were doing the whole. It was. Weekend. It was just, and so like even Monday night they opened Monday Night Raw instead of bringing out Cody right away. Oh. Triple H comes out. He has the whole Triple H entrance and he comes out and they are chanting, thank you, Hunter. And I was like, I want to throw up. Uh, <laughs> it's like, made me want to so throw up. I didn't gross. know that. And then it reminded me of when Vince came back and Stephanie brought Vince out and they chanted, thank you, Vince. It's the same shit all well, over again. And I know for a return, basically, right? I mean, this is what it looks like. Is it, it really looks like she's coming back. It sounds like from what Dave well, sounds he, like is that. They're positioning her for hacking. Well, so Why? yes, here because Sunday during the press conference, he said something about Stephanie is back where she belongs. Then he made some That's... apparently some inappropriate comments about her. And I'm like, I know she's your wife, but like read the fucking room. Like, don't make inappropriate care. comments about your wife 
I don't with, think in this he... con- just think about what the hell you're doing. I mean, I know that's such a I know that there's such a, there's such a big there's such a tiny wrestling bubble that they live in. I know. But I'm like, just read the fucking room. Like you can't they just don't seem to take any of this seriously. Like, I don't think that I'm like, do you understand the gravity of what is happening? The feds are involved. Like, this is not the typical Vince McMahon gets away with it because he's rich, which he still could. But I mean, well, the definitely. feds are involved. Like, I don't. That's a huge deal. But they they rated still know him. not graded him last year. And that's the only reason we know about Janelle in the first place, really. Right. I mean, or yeah. at least maybe not the only reason, but certainly but it's one catalyst. of the main reasons. Let's say that it was a catalyst for right that information making its way into a lawsuit that is now available for us to go hey they raided him and they're not really telling us why but we know it was vice and we know it was mm-hmm. like the the feds that do sex trafficking and yeah like, all of that you and can go sex trafficking with like people that are intersecting with him because there's the other the it's pdd or whatever right yes yeah it's involved in so I was like listening to some of the case that is out of the same district as the Vince McMahon case. I think I've read, I think I did hear something about that being and from the same made, district. I just, it was something that made me think about it because what they've been saying about that case, and this is wild speculation, folks, wildly <laughs> speculating, no information, don't know a thing, just connecting weird patterns that I see in things occasionally is that, the Southern District of New York is what the court that they're both functioning out of. Yeah. But it's been coming out that there are famous people involved in his traffic, other famous people involved in his trafficking yeah. thing. And so it's like there's been a major case going on here for yeah. well <laughs> for oligarchs who are doing <laughs> sex crimes and uh, you know, like it's like Maybe filling the vacuum left by uh, Mr. I suicided myself, but like I just, right, you know, it's weird. Like, there's, I don't want to be, I would definitely not want that footage. Like, that's not the hill I'd want to die on if in six months weird. there's a like case where these people are like mm-hmm. coordinatedly. I mean, even the Brock Lesnar thing and the fact well, that, that's like, what I was going to say. Speaking of sex offenders, Sunday night. Well, he's still employed by the company and we didn't really have any plans for him, but he's sitting at home. So he is still employed. I don't know if it's because he's not officially like it does not say Brock Lesnar, but literally there's nobody else that could be in that lawsuit. Nobody else matches that description. So he, but his name is not in there. So I don't know if they won't fire him because they're afraid that he could sue them and be like, you can't sue me. You can't fire me because I'm not actually named, named and like my name is not in there it could be anybody else literally the only description is brock lesnar but so i don't Except know if that's why they haven't fired him. him it sounded like they were setting up to bring him back they don't well care. they said that it was for royal rumble they had talked about it and john alba yeah. misspoke and missed when he tweeted he meant he said wrestlemania and he meant royal rumble but the the most important yeah. part of that tweet was he is still employed by the company and yeah. he's just sitting at home so and that's what Dave reported in the Observer is that it's essentially there's they've admitted that he's still employed. Yeah. And so I don't know if they just don't they're waiting for it to blow over so that he can come back or they're waiting for the they think the lawsuit's going to get settled and then he can come back or if they just want to I mean fire you him. make a good point though because wrongful termination right now wouldn't be so great and it wouldn't look good because they would essentially be admitting to something by firing him yeah, whereas if true. they hang on to him and it does become a federal case yeah. they have way more leverage like in general they can yeah. fire him so or I, he just gets I, that's arrested my, that's or... my guess is why he's still there is yeah and that makes you make a really good point and so um I don't know that they're necessarily going to bring him back. I just think that they are being careful they're so that definitely they, legally being they're being legally careful with careful. what they're doing. Um, but it's still gross and he's going to get mm-hmm. subpoenaed too. And I can only imagine what's well, going to happen if he gets on the court. He's stand. effectively on it paid administratively. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's how I feel about it too. <laughs> I mean, I mean and, and, he's and we all, I think TV, we all like, know what that sort of breaks good. down has like, these days i think we can all sort of build off that yeah so i just uh, the whole thing was just really gross with the triple h stuff i just was really 
it just irritated me. It hung a, it made the, I mean, the rest of the show, it did pick up some with some really good stuff, but it just held this cloud over the show. And it just, I was like, are they just going to keep do? I was surprised he didn't show up on NXT and SmackDown, honestly, with the way that they were just handling everything. I just really thought he, I was like, he's going to show up on every damn show this week. He's going to be on speed on Twitter. <laughs> like, I honestly didn't watch the raw after. Cause I just watched mania. Cause I just, that's all. I, yeah. I don't, I mean, but even just think. those two days i was like was when, again much. like when your article dropped i was like oh good i'm not nuts it felt no. like yeah no i, I mean, claimed it earlier because we have a we do a, a loved hate a loved hated and we could pick yes one. i read like, that I article came out too. and i claimed like as soon as he came out i was like i'm claiming this i was like because i will nothing will happen on this episode to make me hate it more when i saw <laughs> the three things we hated and i was like oh yes she killed it and then you had the article up and i was like yes <laughs> I was like, thank you. I was like, please let me write about this. And they were like, it's fine. Go ahead. Like, I'm glad that they on. did because it yeah. was, and it wasn't unnoticed by, again, it, Dave put a whole paragraph in the observer about it, like a whole thing that like spoke to your entire point in your article and you're hating it in the first place. And <laughs> yeah, it did. Like, if it's not, this is like, this goes a little bit, I get, I get the distancing from the fan bullshit too. That's obviously just for stocks and, this was so, you said it, tone deaf. It was so blatant. It was so like, like just to ignore to music, everything. Like he's a wrestler. Like that's, I mean, I know Vince McMahon had music too. Like, so I look his character. And yeah, so it felt like people, but... some of that too, I think that's another where the disconnect came from. Those fans were treating him like Triple H and not Paul Levesque. And so, which is the point, they want you to treat him like a character and not like he is Vince McMahon's son-in-law and he's married to corporate officer number three. They want you to see him as Triple H, who you've watched wrestle since the 90s. Like they want, they, they know what they're doing. They want you to of think course. of that. When you hear that music, you picture long blonde hair, you know, the sledgehammer, like they want, that's what you, they want you to associate with and not, the, even though he's coming out there in a suit. But it's almost now like they're making Paul Levesque a character like the Mr. McMahon character. Gross. It's like he's, but I don't know how often he's going to be on TV. They're saying that as of right now, there is nothing for Stephanie, like that she's not being, as of right now, she has not been brought back into the fold. But I was talking to somebody and he thought they were bringing her back to give her legal protection, which would not surprise me. me. Would not surprise me if that's what's happening. Here. The utter shock of nobody. Anywhere. There was a rumor because I saw a picture. It was from one of those engagement accounts. So who knows? And it just yeah, said right. that they were at WrestleMania. So I don't know if it was WrestleMania 40, but it was Stephanie, Linda and Charlotte. So but there and there was a rumor that Linda was there. I've never heard it confirmed. And so. They're doing this thing where they roll out a bunch of ladies to act like, uh, look, we're nice to ladies. Look at all the corporate ladies. Exactly. And we again, have. going right back to why Vince the same title, thing they did why, to Ashley Vince has a female law. He Vince has a woman lawyer, and it's the same. It's to give that perception. Well, or sending Stephanie to talk to Ashley Massaro, like yes. it's like saying mm -hmm. bury it is gentler from a lady. Yeah. I, hey, guess what? I'm a lady. That would be worse. <laughs> yes. Way I'd rather hear that from a dude, honestly, <laughs> if I had a shoot. I mean, it's a shitty thing to be told anyway, but if I had to hear that, I definitely don't want to hear it from another lady who should know better. Yeah, right. That's BS. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it was hard to watch, but again, it was part of my, like, it's free. It was effectively free. Yeah. And there wasn't, like, me not yeah, watching. Yeah, I used my friend's login. Me and Bob watch watching or not watching was not going to affect the uh, numbers that they did, which were absurd. Like, yeah. they made a ridiculous amount of money, and it's working. They always do. It's working. It's They always do. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. So, that's the dumb shit with uh, WWE. Yeah, so that's Triple H Mania, the Triple H Mania conversation. <laughs> we'll see how it plays out it's, in the following It's the weeks. Paula like, Beck era, okay? So I was like, I just want to stay in the JY era, okay? Okay, you guys. <laughs> that's the only you thing. Min, you min, you min, you whinge about Taylor Swift, but then you steal her freaking branding. What's up right? With that? Right? How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I that's Kevin Ely is like one of the biggest uh, Taylor Swift fans in the world. I love, I love Taylor Swift. I've listened to her since her first. I have all He's of her so CDs. I love it. He's I started so listening to her when her first album came out. So I have been. 
uh i have all of her suits. no i haven't bought like the rebrands lady billionaire awesome. scare people is what it is oh yeah for sure lady billionaires thinking. who have who can speak for themselves i mean <laughs> who she's take just like a powerhouse i mean she's like a brand she knows what she's doing that's, yeah that's yes. stupid that stupid girl <laughs> how dare her she's so dumb what a dumb blonde <laughs> she keeps stealing our sports ball guy <laughs> Sorry, I have to do it once in a while. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, that's what... Okay. So the real so reason... Awesome. One of the, Go ahead. No, no. The reason... The part of the reason I, I chose this today is that's our next Hi, topic. Hassan. Hey, Hassan. Welcome. How's it going? Welcome. <laughs> you missed an entire game and media portion of Fight Game Media conversation, and now we're <laughs> on to the fight conversation. <laughs> oh, that's funny that Vinkin even mentioned it about uh, Ryback, so there. Yeah. The, uh... I don't pay Ryback any attention. I just I, don't. me either. He pops up on my thingy because you know, but yeah, he me. popped up the other day, and I was like, I'm not even because he was thing. criticizing all the crap with that. I was like, I don't like I don't like Megan says here was he was uh, roasting Ryback punk on Twitter anything. about it. He's so. just like listening to Eric Bischoff and Vince Russo. I don't give a shit what either of them think about anything. I don't pay them any attention. They're just annoying. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna that'll segue us right into that was the great. Footage. Yeah. <laughs> of the footage i was like i'm just gonna call it that because we all know well, what the footage is <laughs> well when you put that there i was like i am totally using that in the title because that is perfect it's i don't need to everybody that cares and is watching this knows exactly what we're talking about anyway oh no so. hassan was late by an hour because he didn't get a notification so oh no I'm sorry about that we're glad you're here now though so That's you haven't sweet. missed. I mean, we did have a fun conversation about just random nostalgia. We talked TV about cultural. Like, we uh, talked about uh, we talked phenomena. about Creed. <laughs> we talked about Creed and Limp Biscuit. pop culture, <laughs> and X, a little bit of X Men '97. Yeah. <laughs> Venkins says the great fight that changed the landscape of wrestling forever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we, if you listened to last week's show, we talked about the f the footage and what it may or may not be uh and we gave our thoughts about like who is this for is this eric bischoff 2000 wcw no it was not um or is this something to help further the young bucks and ftr yes that's what mm -hmm. it was <laughs> is this for jack perry to bring him back yes it was <laughs> it did it served its purpose um but yeah so the footage airs uh they have the little like not quite a countdown mm -hmm. clock, but they no, they did have they had, they had two, a they countdown had, clock. It didn't like it didn't count down as like as far as it like, wasn't the whole episode, but it no, showed but up they would about, pop up like this is when you need to watch. Yeah, come back in fourteen minutes. Like it's coming. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Be be prepared. <laughs> so, oh, I like this. <laughs> this should be the the power bombshells era. Mm. I will take mm. it. Okay, I will why take not? It. That's yeah. way better than Triple H era. God, yes. We're so much more fun than that guy. Way more fun. And we're, and we're not in any way related to uh, sex criminals to the best of our uh, yeah. knowledge. Not yet. Yeah, not in the slightest. Not, not <laughs> <pardon> me, <yeah. laughs> but we're yeah, not so the footage uh, aired and they did the they did the so they had obviously the Young Bucks come and cut a promo and they had Nikki was trying to read because we watch being the elite Freaky. so we're trained to we're trying we're trained to Read look at between the we're, lines we're trained to look at things happening in the background so they have things written on their little whiteboard so nikki's like reading stuff off and there was one thing that said something like may 20th and then it said like w or uh, yb pump so it sounds like maybe the young bucks have got some shoes coming <laughs> oh uh-huh they do. I mean, now like. that they've done, they did all that stuff with Nike to the point where Nike did start making them shoes. So yeah, yeah. So they not only made my friends; two of my friends went out and bought kicks, and uh -huh. I want a pair now. I'm like, this is <laughs> your, damn you two and your infernal marketing capabilities. <laughs> How dare you? That's been going How on. How dare for you like, work on me? <laughs> oh my gosh, they're. It's like it goes back to their book. They're so good at it. Like I at least understand where it comes from, but oh my god, those two. Yeah. Yeah. They're yes, they're very good at it. They are for sure. very good at that. <laughs> they are. So they cut they cut their promo and they tie it in with FTR as in 
maybe FTR is actually the masterminds behind this. And we were so distracted because we had to deal with that, that we lost our match. So that's didn't how get they a pray. Brought... Okay. So that's how we bring this in. And also Matt's wearing a, a scapegoat shirt. Talk about Jack Perry a little bit. So, and also this footage aired, like we talked about last week was airing two days before Jack Perry's fight in Chicago. And, Will they tied it all up and then so then they air the footage uh there is no sound because it's it's closed circuit, closed circuit. so it's closed circuit people are like it should have had audio it's closed circuit there is no audio guys it doesn't <sighs> exist audio for this does not exist um that's unless somebody was standing works. right there unless that's what hook was doing just standing there <laughs> recording the audio <laughs> there is no audio of what happened and uh, i mean and the we euro have- in the uk like there's a so closed circuit everywhere like yeah. It's everywhere. So, I mean. And then they have, F- so after it airs, FTR comes out. They cut a promo that I was not really listening to, A, because it's FTR, and B, we were talking about the footage and how it ties in. And then we were talking about how all I'm more, con- the, the what this convinced me of mostly is that Motor City is coming because they were bringing up whoever wins this will be the best tag team of this generation. And they kept they m- mentioned it like four times. They both did. FTR did too. And I was like, Young Bucks are, I mean, Motor City's coming. Okay. That's I what- have a question for you about that coming. that's related to my beef with Tony. So okay. remind me to ask you. Yes, that I did see that. Yes. Well, yes, no, we but it, I thought I was like sitting here thinking yesterday, and I'm going to ask John News the same question because, but okay. I didn't want to like message him at 9 a.m. or something, you know? <laughs> But um, I, I, when we get to the next okay. thing, I have a, a, I might have figured so we will out. Circle, we will circle I, back yeah, to this we'll part of the conversation. Back. Yes. But yes, yeah, so me. I. Uh, so yes, the footage. Yeah, so the footage. I'll let you go first. What were your, what were your thoughts of the I, footage? And the, the footage and the whole segment and like all of it. I mean, I get that it was for an angle. And I get that there was a little bit of, um you know, as, as it was out there sort of punching back, sort of kind of giving people a, but I, I think it was really important is like last week you made the point and we talked about this and it was like, whatever they show us and whatever your, what side you're on, it's going to confirm whatever bias you have. Like you and I, because we're kind of the first wrestling show of the week. <laughs> like we said that last week. Yeah. B- having just barely heard about it the next mm-hmm. morning was yeah. that, if you're a punk fan, it's going to confirm what you knew. If you're a Jack Perry fan, it's going to confirm what you knew. If you're already in, if you've picked a side, it's not going to show you anything different than what you want to see, which is exactly what I saw happening, basically playing out all week. And what all the smart people that I listened to during the week subsequently basically echoed that sentiment and were mm-hmm. like, you were going to see what you were going to see before they put it out anyway. Right. So because it got hyped up to they t- social media did what it does. It blew it out of proportion. Well, it did. You but have they wanted your, you it have to do in a lot of ways. Like I mean, we spent a whole week talking about or what they did on Saturday early. It, like, Sunday released, morning, it was like late like, Saturday. They, it aired during because of WrestleMania and collision airing later. Later. It was late. It was like late Saturday, early Sunday morning. Right. And so by the time we came on air, we had heard from a few different perspectives of what supposedly the footage was going to be, which was that it was going to show CM Punk versus Jack Perry, uh, or not versus, but not, you know what I mean? I mean, yes. <laughs> CM Punk yes. and Jack Perry, that the, that, you know, that uh, situation with them. And so we were like, okay, it's either going to, it's going to be nothing, which it kind of was. <laughs> and was I mean, much. it, it did show somebody getting physical with their coworker. It showed Samoa Joe, pacing back and forth clearly listen that's what nikki and i were talking about from the footage so mojo was clearly listening he's pacing back and forth he, he knows was getting punk. ready for he his knows. match but he was also he knew, well aware he, knows, he was he knows senior punk. veteran he, enough to yeah he he's was known, very aware well and he's known punk for 20 something years yeah fair he enough. probably heard his voice change he probably was like okay this is gonna escalate i'm gonna just pay attention in case things escalate so it seems like and then because then you see that chris hero comes out Chris Hero has known CM Punk for a very long time. 
Jerry Lynn comes out. He's known CM Punk for a very long time. So there's possibilities that they're hearing, okay, CM Punk's getting angry. What do we need to do? Like, where do we, when do we intervene? Like, it seems like they were all kind of just like, we're on standby should something happen. And they all got in very quickly and mm -hmm. kept it from being, wait, it could have been crazy. I mean, who knows what would have happened if they had stepped in. I mean, it was not like it was this insane fist fight or anything like that. Like, it wasn't like they were like on the ground, like, you know, tumbling around on the ground. I mean, it could have gotten there, but like it, they seem to have kind of, they all kind of came in pretty quickly. Like, wait a minute, let's stop this. Um, I, I didn't think the footage, I don't, and like, I don't think it, for me, it doesn't hurt AEW. Like I, it's, it is what it is. I think if they were going to air this, this was the correct way to do it. Yeah. I don't necessarily angle. agree that it should have been shown in the first place, but if they were going to show it, this part makes sense as in it fee it helps the young bucks storyline with FTR as in we lost to you because we were distracted by what happened with that. That's the only reason you beat us. We're better than you. And maybe you're in on it because you're friends with punk. Maybe you, maybe, maybe you are the ones who orchestrated this whole thing, like, which is obviously a and reach, I mean, but, for the, young, but for the young, bucks, but for the young bucks, for the young bucks, Hill characters, that's something they would think is, FTR is mess. They're fucking with us. So they did this like for their story. It makes sense. Yeah. Then clearly by the real, I haven't seen Windy City right yet. I bought it, but I was watching. I had to watch Smackdown. I could not didn't think they were after I let the, after I convinced them to let me cover Supercard. I didn't think I would be able to convince them to let me cover <laughs> New Japan. So I bought it and we'll probably I'm going to try to get to it tonight. So I've seen we already talked about this. They're not hiding anything. It is a closed circuit TV. There is no audio. They're not hiding anything. We're going to make that I mean, real clear. One of the things that the only people that know what went on or anybody that was witnessing and listening to the conversation, we have no idea what Jack said to get the reaction that was right. I mean, at the end of the day, it was like, I, I know that like, even some people were like, I showed this to people that didn't know anything about wrestling and that were just like HR people or mm -hmm. work safety people. And they were like, oh, instant fire. Cause you just can't attack your, your coworkers. Right. Like, exactly. And I mean, right. so it's just, I mean, if you want to go to the very baseline of like what this is, is like, you can't do that. But right. like you said, and like what they were doing. And also, I mean, Dave has made the point where you can't be a punching bag either. It's like it, because WWE is treating this this way, I have a different perspective. My perspective is Same. pay attention to your own damn product. Do the best damn work that right. you can. And don't worry about what your competitors are doing because that's time spent away from what you should be doing. Right. And the reality no, is- No, I 100% agree with that. And then I- And, and if this doesn't hold up next, if the numbers don't hold up next week- you, and I think they may of, have a better chance of holding up because it's the go home show go home for yeah for the pay per view. So it and may, the pay per view and actually is like pretty well plotted out, pretty well yeah. in advance this time. <laughs> it's nice to see, yeah. And so, but like, so going back to uh, Windy City, right? So I haven't seen it, but I have clearly heard a lot and most of my timeline was watching it. <laughs> so I was, so I was seeing what was happening in real time. And then I had a friend who was watching it. So he was telling us in the, in another Slack was telling us what was happening. And so Jack Perry comes out with, you know, he has the Chicago flag, drops the flag, has the Crimea river jacket, has broken glass pants, not actual glass with broken glass. No, on no, pants, I know the, you're the look like of that glass. for people who have not seen it. So like he's playing it up, but the, it clearly worked it clearly did its job because the crowd was very split it was very they were uh, there was some some pro punk fans because it's chicago and there mm -hmm. was also the uh, apparently there were dueling chants of you got uh, he got choked out no he didn't and they came and in the crowd like uh, so lyric was there and I know JD was there and I think a couple oh, yeah. other people, they were like, it's really loud in here. I'm surprised at how divided it is. I don't know how it's coming out on TV. And somebody was like, no, you, it's very clear on TV. Like the fans are having a really good time with it. Um, you know, and so it did its purpose. Its purpose was to further the, the Bucks FTR story and to, to, to further, to bring Jack Perry back into the fold, uh, which was the whole thing. Like I, you and I said this last week, 
this was the this was the plan as soon as he got in. That's why he went to New Japan. That's why he ripped up the contract. He's been giving these answers about how he wanted to leave and they wouldn't grant it. It's all a part of this to bring him in. And I think he I I think the plan is to join the elite. However, they have essentially made him a baby face. They but have. like my friend pointed out, it's not the first time a heel will have gotten over with the crowds, which is very true. We've seen it. I mean, how many times was Kenny Omega? He'll Bucks and he'll Kenny Omega. I was going to say, he'll Kenny Omega is almost like the best Kenny Omega sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He I can agree. Be. He'll, I mean, he'll the Omega is like, Omega. He's, he'll Omega is awesome. Like, I, he'll Bucks is their original it's i mean their that's their butter. og gimmick was yeah. that they because they started out trying to be the nice kids that they actually were and right. everyone tore them apart and their trick was um oh crap let's own this yeah like and that's exactly what they're doing now they're exactly owning the, they're, they're owning what pete the rumors about them as evps they're not nice guys they tell renee she needs to smile more oh they, man that <laughs> you was know nice. like they're doing these really and like tony shivani even so after the clip they showed tony shivani and tony shivani looked kind of upset but then tony was like i guess people asked him about it and he was like the bucks are there the bucks are heels and they knocked me down like i'm supposed to like I'm reacting to them as heels, not I wasn't reacting to the footage. I'm reacting to the Bucks being heels and how they are acting. <laughs> so he was nobody like, wanted to talk about it from everything. Like Brian and Dave this week talked about it. Brian and Garrett talked or uh Dave and Garrett talked about it. A couple of other people. My usual like channel that might have some information, it was like nobody's saying anything. This is like it, I think it was, as Mike put it, it was content for podcasters. <laughs> it was. Uh, it, was now, I, it served its purpose, I think. I mean, it was its an purpose, angle. It was used. They yeah, did it was it an the angle, and I think they, they were, I mean, they kind of were showing you that he was a little bit full of shit, but they mostly yeah, and used it as an angle. And I guess at this point, this is not exactly what it was to the worst. To I mean, we're talking about a company like the other company has like gone on with pay-per-views after people have died or been seriously injured yes. oh, true yeah so in when you talk about like was this carny and stupid like was it silly and kind of a nothing burger yes yeah but is it in line with the wrestling business and what really goes on in wrestling totally yes. i mean also, it's yes. exactly <laughs> what you should frankly if don't give wrestling more credit than it deserves. Like it's still a carnival act. It's yeah, it's like it's forever and always will be a carny business. No how, no matter how shiny it is and how <laughs> you can pretty it up all you want to, but it the underbelly is like it's built on seedy, oh, weird, sorry. crazy. I mean, you know, it's again like nobody's employed to. Very few people are actually employed with WWE. They're contractors. Like mm -hmm. it's a right. That's no different than my friends that do run fair. They're contractors too. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, like, I can't tell you how many what times Nikki and I are like, this is such a carny thing. Like, they're even like, if it's smarter than the average wrestling, it's still pro wrestling. Like, you gotta remember, like, priorities, folks. That's that's why I'm wearing the tinfoil hat, right? <laughs> Hassan has a really good comment that he said he understood that some people are saying that the footage will not change the minds of punk fans, but for the people who have no opinions, they will see that footage and will most likely not agree with punk, which is fair. I think that's, that's a totally really good fair. point. I think that's a very good point to to bring up. And then uh, Daza said, um, do you think Tony Khan was thinking this was a success because it was the talk of the podcast community? I mean, I'm sure that helped. Uh, and the ratings helped because it popped the rating that they thought it was going to pop. It, But I agree with Dave 100%. If it doesn't hold up next week, it doesn't mean a thing. So, Which, yeah, I mean... It, Actually, I think it, you know, what? it doesn't mean a thing because it got it. It served its purpose. It got the Bucks storyline further, and, I, and yeah. it got it got people behind Jack Perry. And Jack Perry will be returning to AEW at some point. I don't know how quickly he's supposed to come back. I'm assuming at Dynasty. Um, I don't maybe know. Maybe not. Next week is a good comparison. I think what really will matter is after the pay per view, and then the week yeah. after the week after the pay per view, right. and then because once Dyn once Dynasty airs, then we're on the road to Double or Nothing, Correct. which is the big 
which is one of and AEW finally AEW getting show. Mercedes in a ring. And yes, because she's not, she's, I don't think she's cleared yet. I, I don't either. I think, she's still I think that's hurt. why they did the injury. The, the who attacked her angle is to keep to further her not being able to wrestle. And people like, they're like, well, she did a move. Yes, yeah, she got physical, but she didn't have a whole last match, y'all. She's not cleared to have a whole last well, match. Well, I mean, she's <laughs> setting herself up anyway. I mean, good, bad, or indifferent. Like, if she goes out there and stinks the place up, like, it's, gonna it's double or nothing so i let's hope she's ready well, re so lyric brought up a really good point a few weeks ago and i think this is where they're going with it that um it's almost double or nothing is like one year and five days after willow versus okay. mercedes where she got injured and she thinks that's why so if she and i'm kind of the same thing that willow that is gonna sense. win the title the TBS title and Mercedes is not going to have that. She, and she's going to try to take it from her the way she took the strong title from her. I think that's the story they're telling here. Um, so I feel like that's where they're going with this. And I think that's a really good first story for her. I think that, and to, to position Willow in this really big spot that she's not, They've put her in big spots before in AEW, but they could have done so much more with her when she was the strong champion, and they kind of just didn't. Um, so I feel like putting her with Mercedes could be really... I think it's a really smart idea. Mercedes is... She's better as a heel. Um, I think she's gonna... You know, I feel like Mercedes is gonna be... And she might be kind of like Mustafa, where she's kind of in between, where she's got the heel tendencies, but thinks she's the the baby face which is kind of what Mustafa is doing he he thinks everything he's doing is right but he has to, he has the hill tendencies and I kind of feel like that's where Mercedes is going um so I like where they're going with her and I feel like the so yeah I, th so in between dynasty and double or nothing these it'll be interesting what happens as far as ratings go um and you know yeah I mean I, I guess ratings I mean, I get it, but for me, I feel like it served its purpose. It did its thing. So regardless of what the ratings are, it worked for what they're doing. At least that's how. I'll, yeah. I'll, and I yeah. told, I mean, again, it's like business is business. And then like what people are interested in are what people are interested in. I don't think either way, like, I still don't think that any of those people that I are, that are out there even doing the analysis of, I don't think any of them realistically think AEW is going anywhere like it's it's in the game it's they're doing the thing i yeah. mean to if we're being fair here like they helped like wwe wouldn't be as hot as it is if it wasn't for the existence of AEW. right one of their biggest stars came from building AEW. yeah and well and then you've even got jade like look at what jade yeah, is right doing. like jade is they're finally, and Jade got herself over. She built her character. She's using very similar entrance in, she's doing the Jaded, which is obviously her finisher from AEW. So like that helped propel, propel, pro, propel her and to get her TV ready. Clearly WWE TV is a whole different beast, but it got her TV ready. But I mean, you know, they felt compelled to compete with them. So, and to even take shots at them on Mania weekend. So to me, that says that they recognize them as a legitimate threat which means competition mm -hmm. which means aw is better fine. for everybody <laughs> competition is better for everybody it breathes competition is it, better it makes it better for everybody we've talked about it a million times there's only so many places that you can work in wrestling that's on tv um so we want you know i do want tna to <laughs> to do well i want you know, I want all these companies that who have a TV presence to do well, because there's only so many TV jobs. And it's not just the talent. It's the camera crew. It's the production. It's hair and makeup. It's catering. Like all of these things. There's so many jobs that are out there because of wrestling. And so they should all I don't I don't want any company to fail. I want them, well, maybe control your narrative, but that's a whole different thing. <laughs> but like, for the most part, like you want wrestling. I mean, wrestling is healthier when there's good competition and when people have jobs and they can, you know, do things back and forth. So, um, you know, I think, uh, I think competition is good for everybody as we have. Yeah. And I think the footage did exactly what it was supposed to do. And I, I think that that's, you know, the way that. Yeah. And then. Is CM Punk going to respond? I mean, he did sort of respond already on social media, but is this going to be the end of it? Who knows? Because that was another thing that you and I talked about last week was depending on what is shown, 
CM Punk responds, then Tony responds, and then it's just back and forth and it never ends. Um, but in this particular context, it furthered storylines. And I'm sure, it's probably not going to be the end of it, but it might be the end of it for right now. <laughs> we'll see. Um, <laughs> Vincent said, meanwhile, you see all those people calling out AEW attendance and viewers. And I think you, to myself, you haven't seen TNA at the moment. Poor TNA. They are, they are on the struggle bus. They are, they, they, they screw themselves so much by getting rid of Scott Demore. Yeah. It's, I don't know if the people in charge even understand what they're doing. I don't so. know that they even care at the, really. yeah. <laughs> I don't think that they care. The dog next um, door. And now, and it's now they, I mean, now right they've now. lost the, the biggest hack team they've ever had that has been there for, they've both been there for 20 years. They're both gone. Gone. Um, there's Steve Macklin. I think his contract is up next month. I don't think he's kind of resigned. His wife works for AEW. There's probably, I'm sure they're looking at him. I'm sure WWE is too, but there's, they've, they've got a lot going on over there. <laughs> Hassan said, our ROH pay-per-views are outselling TNA pay-per-views at the moment. I feel bad for TNA. Yeah. And it sucks because there are people there who are really talented and they work their asses off, you know, um, yeah, attendance wise. Yeah. And they, these people work their asses off and they want to, you know, make it to the next level or they want to get better at their craft and tell these stories. And there's, a, it's just very unfortunate that the business side of it is just kind of messing it up. And then, and I mean, like, there are some, there are some storyline things that are questionable and there, and still like a lot of stuff with impact or TNA. I only watch things. Maybe that going back about. to TNA was a bad idea because like your business immediately turned back into old school. TNA. Well, TNA was the correct thing, but changing the name to TNA got them the most attention they'd had in five years. Oh, and right. Scott Demore was leading that charge. Uh, and he was passionate and they fired him. And it, as soon as they fired him, it all, I know all the goodwill that's... they earned went away. I mean, everything I've read about that situation is that those people just don't understand wrestling and don't care. They don't care. No, it's just, a, I think for them, it's just a a property that they own to part of their assets folder. Okay. And that's that's pretty much what it is. They think like. it has value, but they just don't understand like what the value is. So Right. And that they've made the value worse yeah. by getting rid of the one person who actually gave a shit about that company. <laughs> that's not the talent and it's like uh, one of the best at what he does in the business really when you think about it yeah no for sure. i would agree i with mean that. when you look at like how the talent reacted to losing him that says a lot because i mean yeah that tells you actually everything that talent really can agree on stuff and they usually don't like their bosses <laughs> right he seems universally loved in that locker room um and losing him was a huge huge yeah. blow they have not recovered from it and i don't know that they will be recovering from it anytime soon <laughs> nope um all right. all right so uh we will get to this next portion uh that will circle back to the motor city stuff but also uh i'll tell you why the part of the why we are covering the fight and fight game media because <laughs> that mel is gonna fight tony khan <laughs> i am gonna fight tony khan because really you put a pay-per-view in tacoma washington but not Detroit, Michigan. Tacoma. Okay? That's I mean, because it's easy for the Japanese. I know, it's Swerve's hometown, yeah. whatever. But there's a, I mean, I'm sure it's better now, and it was getting better when I was there, but I'm still that the aroma of Tacoma jokes still freaking exists. <laughs> it's like, come on, really? Like, you've been promising us a pay-per-view, and you roll out your, like, all these months of pay-per-views and no Detroit dates. There's not, like... There's and all these new dynamite things are coming out. I got an inbox in mine the other day. It was like, AEW is on the move. I'm like, yay, they're not coming to Detroit. Like, they there's no plans through the end of the summer. Right now, there is not a single Detroit date on here. So, at, so yes, I am gonna fight him. Unless <laughs> something I thought it of. Us, it took us when Charlotte, it took us a over. Uh, before we got collision this year, it took us a, I think it was like a year before they came back. Yeah. I and I guess I got. shouldn't bitch. Cause we got like the first, no, like, but no, like, it's, no, it's completely understandable when he's like, he said, time, he's like, promised you he's NFL promised draft. Three reviews uh, several times. Multiple Every time times. he's in Detroit, he promises you a pay-per-view and, or so, you know, so I can understand. And I'd, we be, I'd be salty. As, we oh, yeah, as an audience. Everyone loves watch like, 
everyone's like, oh my God, I have dynamite in Detroit every week. Like we are a hot crowd. We are a lot of fun. This is a wrestling town. What? Right. What? What is the problem? That yeah, I saw when I was because when I got the when I got the uh, the PR email mm -hmm. and I was looking through it and I was looking at the dates and I was like, oh, uh -oh. it's not on here. <laughs> Mel's gonna be mad. I was like, Mel's gonna be so mad when she sees the schedule. I was. And I was right. I wasn't just mad. Right I was like, so. you were you were justified. As Tony, likes, Tony likes to to tweet a justified. This is awesome chance. So justified. Mel's anger is justified for yeah. not getting a pay per view and apparently not getting a dynamite. Maybe even not collision because collision brings ROH with it. <laughs> I, it's okay so now here's my question though after stewing on this a little bit yes. and then thinking about it and having to do with the motor city machine guns and i thought of this last night was like huh do you think the reason that there is no detroit date announced because they are in negotiations with motor city and they want to do the because if they come back here that's a guaranteed pop. Like, it's huge. Sure. I mean. It's certainly possible. Maybe that is it. Because my, I, I was it. just under. My Otherwise, guess, I'm going to have to kick. I'm gonna have my to go guess to was that it was going to be at Dynasty because of once the Bucks win, Bucks are going to say, we're the greatest tag team to ever exist or of our generation. And Motor City is going to be like, you wouldn't even even, you wouldn't even be on TV if it wasn't for us. <laughs> and then but then i thought about it i was like do they save it for dynamite do they like when they're i'm sure when the bucks win the title they're probably gonna have some big ceremony on tv like you do and then perhaps motor city interrupts it there so i, I my my feeling is they either come at dynasty or after but that is a really good that's a way to pop a rating <laughs> is to say to get the big hint of okay they're in detroit they're gonna come and it was funny because smackdown was in detroit on on Friday. the 12th yeah on the 12th and i that's was like why we uh couldn't we know that there's rules uh you can't tony can't announce any no wwe has rules no other major wrestling promotions can announce shows for two weeks before or after oh that's right i forgot about that rule so we're still in the window Huh, for Detroit very a little bit so that could and I know that could be part of it and I'm I mean, that's to certainly yeah calm. I didn't think about because that but you bring up a really it was good point. last it's Friday possible. so it was what the 12th right or whatever no yeah that's right it was for this past Friday from this from today so not next Friday but the Friday after mm -hmm. will have to be the which I mean Again, they could come at Dynasty and then have a dynamite show here where they show up, which would get a huge thing. Or right. like we talked about, if they do show up, um, because Double or Nothing always has that. Yeah, big that surprise. was our other prediction was maybe Double or Nothing. And that's a always... pretty huge deal. Yeah, and it's in Vegas, and there's generally always at least either one new, like either somebody returns from injury or somebody signs or you know so yeah that, I think and then that, maybe i guess like maybe we'll get the, the like detroit will be the dynamite after double or nothing or something yeah which wouldn't be terrible the fallout from all out yes that's our that's what our show is usually called it's the fallout I know, it's, from all out. but yeah it's everyone's show i just it is everyone's it. show because obviously you have to you have the the well i mean once you've had a brawl at a show now you have true yes, so, but, yes. <laughs> but no, so that was but i know, but if that's not if those like logical uh those those intuitive leaps don't turn out to be true and we continue to not have a date me and tony She's are gonna really have gonna beef fight. hey I've, i'm right there i'll beef i've i've had many reasons many times where i've wanted to fight him so i wanted to fight him last the day of the cuts so Big beef. <laughs> yeah. Right yeah 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 but uh i mean I think that people enough people wanted to fight him that he like brought Anthony Henry back. So good as he should. Yeah. I mean, he <laughs> did say that he's going to bring him back when he's better. So hopefully. and he's like four. Uh, he tweeted that he's like four weeks away from being cleared. So if good, if everything goes well, he should be back in about four weeks. I'm assuming they're going to come back to ROH, but I'll take it. Um, and it's funny because uh roddy got announced 
for DPW for the May, they, their show in May in Raleigh. Um, they announced Roddy's debut and Anthony Henry quote tweeted and said, Oh, I'll be, I should be cleared by then. <laughs> because he wrestled and then he actually, he tweeted a link. He wrestled Roddy in Evolve and he wow. tweeted a link to where he wrestled him in Evolve a few years ago. So, I mean, I know that's the first place I saw JD was in Evolve. So that's yeah. Like, and Anthony Henry, I saw a few times in Evolve, and I mean, both of them were at Evolve a ton. So yeah, they were they, they were, were pretty heavy regular Evolve for a while. Yeah, Swerve, they, Swerve was regular on there. I mean, we yeah. always had him. Yeah, around, I got to see like, Swerve a few times from Evolve, and I was trying to think there was somebody else that, and like I saw Street Profits at Evolve because that's when they started mm -hmm, their relationship with WWE. Yep. So I started. I saw. That's how I saw <laughs> so that was the night. Kushida. <laughs> Drake, uh, and JD Drake introduced us to Street Profits, and oh, cool! And we talked to them. And we found out that we, I think, was it Doc? No, not Docs. I think it was Tez. He went to like my high school's ri like football rival. That's awesome. <laughs> so we talked about that, but we also told him about how much we loved his wife. <laughs> <laughs> like we were talking to them and we were like we love your wife so much and he was like i mean i get it and so like and then they were leaving and we were like tell bianca we love her and he turned around and looked at us like that's please so stop. cute <laughs> i love i love marking out with people like that <laughs> but he just looked at us like please go away <laughs> go away i don't like you oh hassan says that uh, aminata is on deadlock tonight she tweeted oh was she already announced and i forgot or is this a new thing oh god that's gonna be Oh man, she's gonna kill it there. Actually, that's where I saw her. I saw her at DP DPW one, which was like a live thing they were doing. So it wasn't a pay per view; it was a show that they pre taped. But I—that's how I saw her the first time in person. And she wrestled Jada Stone, who a lot of you may have heard Jada's uh, name a lot this weekend because Bailey wore her shirt during her scrum after winning mm -hmm. the title. And so Jada's name came up, but that's who I saw. And uh, Jada was at the last Sasha show, um, but that's where I saw Queen Amidata the first time where she wasn't on two minute matches on dark. <laughs> and I saw her wrestle Jada and she was just clearly, as you have seen, she's, 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 uh, she's a hard hitter. hitter. She's kind of stiff, not stiff, but like, she's really aggressive, which I love, which I love about her. But like, I had not seen that in the, the, two and three minute elevation matches. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I was like, where has this Queen Aminata been? That match was phenomenal. And so I, I love a, her. I've been a huge fan of her since that show. And so I'm so glad that she's getting all this attention and like the stuff they did with her last night. Last was night. Great. I was so excited when she came. In. Oh my gosh. It was so quiet and dead in that uh, arena. It was like terrible. That also kind of, that's what got me more peeved is like, Oh, sure, I'll send it here. And it's so boring. These people couldn't, like, there were, like, yeah, some I really do, good I matches on there. When, when Red Velvet came out, I asked Nikki, I was like, is the crowd just that crappy? Or did they just not like Red Velvet? No, they're, because like, this... dead. No, they were dead the whole time. It was yeah. so quiet in there that when they were talking, it was actually kind of funny because I meant to tell you this. is like, uh, so when Renee, I think it was, it was interviewing Serena Deeb, it was so quiet in there that some dude yelled out, best women's wrestler in the AEW women's division and it caught on audio and I was like well he's not wrong and I was like, she's definitely yeah, out audio. there well and it's funny because and we can and you can hear Shane Taylor anyway but you could hear Shane Taylor last night talking yeah you could hear <laughs> what's that crowd they were me? all the in ring was like picking up on the audio because it was so dead in there it was <laughs> David says that Roddy was one of the only guys working both ROH and Evolve concurrently when ROH and Evolve pretty much became enemies that's true yeah, yeah. that's a really good point I had kind of, I've kind of forgotten about that but yeah, yeah that's correct yeah so I yeah it'll be interesting to see I. Also, one little thing I want to complain about real quick. Battle of the Belt should not have title eliminator matches. The show is four titles. Why was Rock why was did why did Roddy not put his title on the line versus Rocky last night? I always why love are we watching doing Battle of the Belt because I'm always like, okay, they didn't offend any AW belts basically on the show that was for AW and no belts changed hands. Which again him. I knew that they wouldn't. I know, I, but I knew that you were, I was like thinking of you the whole time. Yeah. And then, but let me tell you, Hook versus Shane Taylor was Good. awesome. Good. I loved that match. I was glad to see, if you've watched the show, you know, I love Shane Taylor. I 
love that dude. I've you know, been a fan of him since he was in ROH. And so I'm glad anytime I get to see him wrestle as always, I'm always happy, but I just, I thought, and I thought hook looked really good. I thought that was just, I think it was a really good match for hook. I think hook needed that match um, to show that he, who he can, because clearly Shane Taylor is a big dude. Yeah. And to see him figure out how to get in that red room and to lock it. Like I, I just, I really enjoyed that. that suplex that like su uh, that suplex on him at one point. Yes. I was like, I guess when your dad is this human <laughs> suplex machine, you know how to get a guy that size up. Yeah, I was like, they are doing this, this match. And they kept talking perfectly. about that last night. They kept talking about his hips last night. And if he was ever going to be able to, and Taz talks about that a lot. And I was like, yeah, Taz has definitely taught him, which is another reason I hate this stupid storyline with Jericho. And if they don't get Jericho. Oh my God. I just, I, I, I was, you, took, you literally were, like, like, get out of my head. I was, my next thing was. <laughs> like just, the storyline I hate the most is the one with Soraya and her yes, violent the, brother. Like that's my normal, that's the story I hate the most. But Hook being involved with Jericho and anything, that, that's my number two most hated. My hope here hated. is that <laughs> I thought I was hoping when he went to Taz's house was going to tell him to F off. But my hope here is that when they do this, whatever bullshit they're doing this week, is that Taz tells him to F off and stay away from my son. So I hope so. I, I mean, I don't think that's what's coming, but. Boy, would I no, be the happiest right aid. Well, and I'm guessing they're going to have a dynasty match, and it's probably going to have some stupid stipulation just, with it. I, get away from Hook. He doesn't need you. There's go, go like suck the leg go out of on some tour. other young talent. Like go on tour and leave him alone. I just, <laughs> it's not necessary. He doesn't need it. it. Jericho should be using to supplement people that aren't. Hook doesn't need. Hook's been getting Hook's already a pop. over. Hook got a pop, but he was like. He was getting all kinds of heat before he even wrestled a match just for coming out and like strutting. They brought him when, um, when, not collision, when, uh, yeah, when Battle of the Belts was here in Charlotte the first time, they brought Hook out between, like, they brought him just out to get just the pop. to pop the crowd. Literally, they did the like, same thing in Toronto TV. for collision. He literally just, came out and he strutted and he like went back in. Yes, I'm going to go back to David's comments in a minute, but Nikki's oh, comment ahead, ties into what we're talking about. But I yeah. will come back to David in just a second because I want to talk about that. Um, Nikki said, I said, choke the meat during the Red Rum. And Santa was like, Nikki. And I was like, what? That's what they chanted at Revolution, which is true. They were chanting choke the meat. It's around. okay. It's all right to make <laughs> innuendo jokes. It's all, as Jim likes to say, these are jokes, people. We are making jokes. They are meant to be funny. If yes. you don't have a sense of humor, then this is not going to be the show for you like it's just <laughs> i i think that you know just having a good old laugh david said right. he thinks jericho is hook's main event solidification win i hope so i hope so too maybe uh, he wins and jericho just goes away then and we're fine loser goes on tour with his band for a year yeah there we go <laughs> so david says who do you think uh rocky and chucky t ultimately go with i think they're turning best friends heel I think Stat is the one who attacked Mercedes. I think she, I think they want it to look like it's Julia or um, Sky, but I think it's going to be Stat because Trent whispered something to her. And I think she's already, she's jealous of Willow. Um, she doesn't want Willow to have the TBS championship, I think is what it is. So I think that's going to be what turns her. I don't necessarily, and so I think, I feel like Chucky is going to turn heel. Um, I think I feel like that's where they're going. Rocky, that's a good question because Nikki pointed out she asked me last night if I thought they were going to be bring back Rapongi Vice. Ooh. But I don't know how much Rocky is going to wrestle now that he is the yeah, new. He's doing two jobs. He's now. the new president of talent relations for uh, for New Japan now. Yeah, so he's doing two jobs. I don't know how active he'll be, but that doesn't mean he can't be part of Rapongi Vice. Like maybe for Forbidden Door. Ooh, maybe for Forbidden Door they do Rapongi Vice be... versus somebody from New Japan, perhaps. Oh, that'd be fun. Maybe. And then um, he said, anytime Chuck Taylor wrestles is a much wa must watch for me. Been on the Chucky e. T bandwagon for years. Me too. I love Chucky e. T. And I'm he, in. Yep. I. I thought, and he said, Chucky e. T or Chucky e. should turn heel. They were best, the best friends of low, low more or fiber, fiber after all. That is true. That is, you are correct. That could be a lot of fun. They're so yeah, cool they that they can they do just been heels. They could also 
be like um because they never got the tag titles like which you oh, know yeah. i when i have fussed about that i've complained about that for a very long time that best friends should have had the tag team titles a long time ago so they can kind of maybe this is kind of their they're tired of orange cassidy he's weighing them he's down too famous he's too famous for them <laughs> so perhaps yeah i i don't I, that's interesting i like i like the idea of i didn't even think about that but yeah rocky and the best friends but and... they could do and if motor city is coming in mm. then a hill best friends would work makes more sense because you can't so have too many faces. that's where this is headed um mm. David also makes a good point that Rocky is a top Rudo in CMLL, which would work for him to turn to. Right. Yes. This is correct. Also, that guy correct. is everywhere. He is. And, so, and he brings it. Like, he just wrestled. That match with Roddy was great. Yeah, but every time he's I he love him in so ring. much. Every time he gets in the ring, he brings it. He yeah. Every single time, he loves to wrestle so much. I just love Rocky so much. I almost also, want if Rocky, somebody, if Rocky is somehow gets this message, somebody can pass this along but to Rocky Romero. Want- Rocky Romero. Rocky Romero, now that you now that you are doing talent relations for New Japan, please book work horsemen than the World Tag League. Thank you. I mean, he kind of already was, but like he was mostly scouting for them, not actually like he yeah, didn't have like a real official, like, but it's like kind of official now. And he's supposed to be in charge of a bunch of this stuff in like the North American production and everything. So we could see improvements. Clearly, I think they're finally starting to get that the American pay per views, because they were building for the next one on this one. And that's something that's fairly new. They haven't built a lot yeah. of, but they already have, it's Ontario, California is next. Yeah. New is Japan, North one, America is show. That one that, is that, wait, the, and they're also, is that Capital, no, Capital Collision. That's the one in DC, right? Yeah, that's later on, I think. She. I feel like that comes in the summer towards like G1 time frame. No, there's, yeah, because there's one that's like right around all in or all out or something oh, like okay. that resurgence is in maven can says okay so that's the california one right resurgence i think so i think you're right i haven't watched the show i saw a bunch of uh i was watching the backstage comments from windy city riot capital collision is in august so capital collision so that's the one that i think is around like all it's somewhere like they should have it in europe or i mean not in europe in the uk like around all in they're gonna do that Perhaps that's where that might be something they're building to. Resurgence has three matches announced already. Venkin says USVA guys with improvements are going to be slow. There are a lot of internal changes going on. Yeah. That makes sense. How was the, how was the show? How did you, I know that you were preparing to get to it. Did you sell it? Did you save us house of torture shirts? I know that they have <laughs> apparently have been, apparently they've been selling really well because of a certain scapegoat. I, I hear they're, they're flying off the shelves. So hopefully you were able to. <laughs> I just think... David said, don't they usually do a UK show around all in, all out time too? New I Japan think, does, right? right? Don't they? I mean, I know Red like... Pro does, but I don't know about. Oh, no, wait. It's Royal Quest. He's right. It's Royal Quest. They already do have right. a show. That'll That's, be Royal Quest. As a matter of fact, because John, it was Wembley, and then the next weekend was Royal Quest. Was, or That's right. No, yeah. wait. Royal I'll, Quest is in October because... That was the Royal Keith Quest is October, married. right? And then yeah. there is no, something that's, that... Yeah, it was the weekend Keith got married, and John joked about the fact that... Because we were like, you're going to Royal Quest and not coming to his wedding. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't. That's not what happened. <laughs> yes. That is right. Hmm. So, yeah. I don't know. Yeah very interesting. interesting yeah i can't wait to Theories. watch i'm hoping I, I hope i get to it tonight because i can't wait to me watch too it. i need to get we to have it. well i don't know should we go ahead and talk we can go ahead and talk about this person and then we can circle back to the other story if we yes. want to talk about we can do it that way while we're on the topic <laughs> i love that you uh, put egot that's my favorite thing in the world it made that popped me <laughs> so because it was i was talking so this is funny. We'll go ahead and give you a spoiler alert if you have not heard and also yeah, did not wait, watch Coll- wait, wait. Gotta get did it. Did not watch Collision. There it is. Big spoiler alert for Collision and a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> so yes, because they talked about and, it on and Collision Windy City a, Riot if you haven't a watched lot. it. So yes, if you haven't seen so as you can tell by the pic well, and I guess our picture gave it away. <laughs> our it slate sort of did. John Moxley. 
is now the IWGP heavyweight champion. He defeated Naito on Friday, and he is the first wrestler to have won the WWE heavyweight championship, the AEW world championship, and now the IWGP heavyweight championship. He is the first ever to do that. And so I had tweeted that. And one of my, one of my mutual Twitter followers was like, do, is there like, it feels like there should be a name for that. Like, like cause EGOT. he's one, like an EGOT type of thing. <laughs> and so I was like, is it, so I was like, it was W I was like, so was it like the W A N like when like W E A W new Japan. And I was like, wait, if he wins the ROH ch- championship, then it would be the Warren W A R N. it's like that's what i'm gonna call it (laughs) like he is he is an r away from the warn he is so he's gonna gonna defeat mark briscoe to become (laughs) r anyway that's a lot of belts you should get like a ring or something that seems like i don't know man you're the king of wrestling at this point. I think this is super smart. I there was like I know that Jeremy and Steven were pretty convinced this was gonna happen. And then John had messaged me and he's like, I think this is gonna happen. And I'm like, you know, it would be the smartest thing in the world if they did, because that guy it, when you think about like all the crap that's been going on in AEW, like all the bull crap, the, the social media and the brawl and the whole thing and all these like things that have gone on, the only thing John Moxley has done has been a hard worker, a great promo, a leader in the ring. He just loves the business. He is so happy about being part of something like. When he did Forbidden Door that first time, he was just like so happy i mean this is a good idea this is someone with and it gets him away from the drama which i'm sure he's sick of because yeah well he has he's been through the wwe system he doesn't need this shit he has a resident card in yeah yeah that's he and people were bitching he's not going to be on these road two shows lo and behold Body Slam report said yes he will be. Why not? AEW has given him time because they this was in the works. They AEW has granted him people. permission. He will be in Japan. This he is will smart. be doing he will not be a part-time champion. He's going to be there. And he he'll will be, be They already talked about Dave said this morning he's probably going to do Genesis and uh Dominion. Well, and he already has or not Genesis. That just happened. He's gonna Don Taku and is it Don Taku and Dominion? That's it. And then, um, yeah, because he already has two people he could wrestle, and because he called out one of them to that and said he wanted to wrestle them, and then he got attacked by somebody else. Who I don't know if I should give the spoiler. Nikki, if you are listening, I don't know if you want to mute this. I'm about to spoil this for you. <laughs> Because Nikki wasn't here. She was uh, she was helping out our aunt with a couple of things. So she has not heard some of the things. So hopefully giving her time to mute this. But um, again, this is a spoiler for Windy City Riot. We popped up the thing. Um, so John Moxley, from what I understand, called out Shooter. Okay. Wants to face him. Renarita comes out and was like, not on my watch, and was like, I want to be first. So some people have said that maybe at Resurgence, it will be Moxley versus Ren. But some people have put forward a theory that um, Shooter will win the G1 G1 and get the shot at Wrestle Kingdom and he wins at Wrestle Kingdom this puts Shooter in the spot he should have been in Mox is his wrestling dad like the story is right there I'm so funny that you say that because that's exactly what I was talking to Don about we he said to me I hope that Shooter wins the G1 and they finish it in January and I was like I'm in David, however, brings up another, if that's not what they're doing, David brings up a good point. Ideally, Shota versus Mox is the main event at Forbidden Door. He makes his protege a name in the U.S. off the bat. That's I like that theory. And Vincan points out that would be a very long-ass Moxley reign if he's champion until January. Yeah, that's true. It is a fair point, Vincan. So... Although, I don't know if him giving it up in June, is that when... 
I mean, Forbidden Door is usually end of June, so. Yeah, because May 30, because end of May is double, double or nothing. nothing. So, yeah. 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 Um, and I'm going to go back to some of these comments because yes. they're funny. And also, there's some stuff from USBA guy. So, uh, he USBA guy was busy working uh, the PR booth. It was a good crowd. I am nice. very glad to hear that. I heard that it, I heard that there was a really great show. I can't Sounded like, like people had fun. So uh, David said his one minor complaint about Windy City Riot was the ring. New Japan keeps one of their rings in LA. AEW could have been, could have lent a ring out. Didn't like that 18 by 18 in such a large arena. <laughs> Hassan says NWA champion without working NWA. Listen, might as well. Let's just, we'll give him all the belts. And then David <laughs> pointed out how he has Mox has GCW credit. And then he said the Wang, <laughs> which would be, <laughs> which is also great. <laughs> That's good. I like it. The Wang is good. I forgot about GCW. So he's kind of got the Wang now. He's got the Wang. <laughs> I love the Wang it. can turn into a Warren should he get the ROH a title. Wang, but in the or, meantime, or just a Wanger. <laughs> there we go. There we go. The Wang dash R. <laughs> Wang R. Um, no, it's just like the internet stuff, like imager and stuff. <laughs> right, exactly. Flicker. <laughs> well, I lost my earbud. Hold on one second. Uh... So funny. Oh, man. Oh, okay. So, uh, USVA guy was responding about the ring, which the, log the logistical cost of rent things is a major one. Our costs are majorly lessened with our agreements with local promoters. Totally makes sense. I, I, it's I hard. It's, the equipment is not cheap. I mean, that's part of the reason I think Tony bought the whole infrastructure of ROH, including all of their rings. Like they, he bought the whole thing. So. Oh, wow. He bought all their production equipment. He brought all of their ring equipment. He bought the entire, like the whole shebang when he bought ROH. So that yeah. setup is, I mean, I'm sure it's upgraded and fixed up, but I mean, sure. he bought the yeah, whole thing. Yeah, he did. He bought, yeah, he got like all of it. So. Yes. And David says that uh, Mox is their transition to the Rewa 4. There you go. Yeah, then really maybe excited. they won't be upset about it being um because they don't like being called that, but the yeah, no, they sure don't. They all hate but, it. That's the one thing that unites them all is they all hate it. <laughs> yeah, but the more they hate it, the more we're gonna do it. So <laughs> they should true. know human nature. <laughs> that is fair. That is very fair. But yeah, and I saw some of the results from the show. Um, I don't know what happened completely i know i was i got a text message that said sam you are gonna hate west coast wrecking crew for what they did and i was like did they beat up filthy thomas and he was like it's not what you think and so later i was scrolling and saw a tiny clip and i was like hell no and i kept scrolling so i have an idea of what happened nikki does not know i have told her we wouldn't really talk about it because i have not seen it no problem however i you. know i know from the tiny little clip i saw i do now have heat with west coast wrecking crew because <laughs> how very dare you <laughs> tune in next week you'll find out <laughs> yeah tune in next week to for my full see flip. this is what or I actually mean. you probably just follow me on twitter which or is right twitter. there because I will tweet. I, I'm sure I'm going to tweet does. about it. I love it. <laughs> and then I heard, thank God, uh, Matt Riddle is not a champion anymore. Yeah, I heard that I hope too. When I heard I that, I was like, oh, I hope champion. he's. I hope he's done with them for good. I hope they ended that experiment. Hopefully, it was just a short con. I can't tell if it was uh, just. He, said that I he can't tell if he had like X number of dates already, and they're like, "We'll see how it goes." And there was a whole lot of backlash for him and he does have some dates apparently i was listening this morning this observer radio that came out and he said that he does have a few dates left with new japan but he's not sure where that's going i don't hopefully this means that they're just gonna work that out and i guess yeah i heard move along i saw I, that there was one thing that he also had heat with the company because he defended the he he had a match and in the promotion like squirrel squared circle expo or something and apparently he made it a title match without their permission oh you can't do that oh. yeah <laughs> i don't know he no i yeah i just i hope we're almost done with that and then they can get him out of We'll see. USVA guy says that was awesome. West Coast Wrecking Crew and Filthy Tom are supposed to wrestle tonight in Raleigh. Yeah, they're on the DPW nice. card. Cool. Yes, they are. 
Um, yeah, because yeah, DPW has a show today in Raleigh or Durham. It's weird how I think it's like, Durham. It's kind of fun because even in the indies, there's like because there's like peripheral stories of the people that are on like major promotions when they show up there. There's almost like some there's like mini storylines going on in all of wrestling. So it's just, like yeah. C and D yeah. plots that are kind of like associated <laughs> tangentially, yeah, but like still quests. like they're kind of like the extended universe of regular wrestling right now. Yeah. And it's right. kind of cool because it's like yeah. he's also this. And it's like, oh yeah, I forgot he had the GCW championship. That's yeah. Right. Well, yeah, and that's like the time. that was like one of the things I was bringing up about Alex Shelley last week and why I didn't think he was going to WWE. I was like, he's holds titles in various companies. Like, I don't think he's gonna give that up anytime soon i mean he could but they are and like they already announced like last weekend they announced he's wrestling timothy thatcher in somewhere on the west coast i think like that's coming up like may 16th i was like i don't think he's and then they're doing the anniversary show for city yeah that one you were talking about and then he's been uh he's doing a wrestling revolver has a show this month i think they're doing there's one or no there's one in may that he's doing and they announced his match yesterday against somebody. I'm not thrilled that he's wrestling because there's sex pest adjacent probably, but <laughs> so the wrestling, but no, I'm not I'm wrestling. Not has that. a lot of that going on. These yeah. Days. I'm not so really fun. thrilled about that match. I was like, get him away from Alex Shelley, please. But yeah, so there's a, uh, but yeah, we'll go back to going back to new Japan. Um, but yeah, from the overall, what I heard was it was very positive. People were saying it was one of their favorite shows of the year. Oh, I heard that Stephanie and, um, um, was it Azumi? No, it was. Yeah, I think it was. A, yeah, I was going to say Azumi. Azumi. I think it was Azumi. I heard they had like a banger of a match. I heard that too. Um, I know Azumi was Dora. really impressive on. Oh man, she was great. She's on great. Last I mean, that she was, was like. Honestly, I thought it was pretty interesting. That crowd was pretty dead, but during that match, she was so good that they were actually they getting into, into it. it. Mm-hmm. I yeah, was like, "Wow, was... there's like some real heat for this match right now." It's kind of awesome. yeah. There was some good stuff, and then yeah, and then I know Trisha Dora wrestled her. She wrestled uh, her tag team partner was Alex Windsor, who Ooh. is Will Osprey's like, significant other. Um, they wrestled Viva Van and. Why am I blinking? I don't. I remember. I, I saw it. And I was like, oh, that should be good, too. Because I've seen Viva Van off and on because she was doing, like, Dark and Elevation. And then she's done some ROH stuff. Mina Shirakawa. Thank you, Vinkin. I completely blinked. Thank I was like, you. I can see the poster. But, yeah. So, I. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, I am can't wait to watch this card. Now, I'm hyping myself up thinking yeah. about it. Now, I'm like. I actually, it's funny because I got up this morning and looked at it and was like, can I pull? And I'm like, I can't. I'm not going to be able to get it. And then I knew that we were both well, behind. So I felt better. <laughs> I wanted. Well, and then, uh, yeah, because I. That's well, you had to do like, like they had not done, this weekend still. If so. they had not done Battle of the Belts, I probably would have at least started Windy City yeah. last night. But I had to cut co- because I was doing live coverage of Collision. I was they were like, "Can you do live co- coverage of Battle of the Battles too?" So I did, and so yeah, I, I did all three like, hours last night too, which I yeah. Was and so I covered I it, and I was like, "Wait!" And is Rampage is is Rampage on next Saturday after Collision? Yes, they're doing. It I again. completely missed that, and my editor was like next week can you do collision and rampage and i was That's like because they squeezed it in again like they did with battle of the belts and <laughs> yes. they keep i completely missed the announcement and i was no, like i saw it, it i was it, like what are you talking about he's like yeah rampage is gonna be after collision and i was like sure i'll just that's fine i'll cover it all it's not a problem i just completely missed the announcement i was like what are you talking about but yeah yes, it so. came towards the end they did it they do that so fast i wouldn't have i ended up watching the dynamite show before i watched actual dynamite this week because of how uh-huh. things went yeah so there were a couple of things i was just hyper aware of like the, i was paying attention to the clock and i was paying attention to the announcement about battle of the belts that they made at the end because paul made the point he was like hey jeff did you know that battle of the belts is on saturday and he's like what well, they've been, like, they, they had like, actually promoted, but I knew Battle of the Belts was the 13th because they had they only few, like squeezed it in. It kind of was, but then they didn't say well, anything. Well, they, they had talked about it, it a at few the weeks end. Ago. They talked Dynamite. about it a few weeks ago and then they stopped talking right. about it. And then they were, it's all like, next oh, yeah, we at the end of Dynamite, the very, very end. And I think if maybe if Paul hadn't hung a lantern on it, 
I probably would have missed it too. I saw it because I saw the announcement of the because of the uh, the uh, the main event match that they yeah, made. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, which we will circle which back to in a second. Not collision, to. but battle of the belts. Uh, yes, I did see that. Hassan said Mariah was wearing the same top Mina wore on last night. Might same jean shorts, but different colors, subtle details. LOL. Well, Storm will turn on May eventually. Yes, oh, yeah. I saw that. I saw that, and it was funny because I saw Mariah's top, and I recognized, like, I was like, oh, that top is cute, and I didn't really think, and I was like, wait a minute, and somebody pointed it out, and I was like, that was Mina's top because there's a there's a picture of me and she's wearing the same top except for obviously it's in black and white on there but yes i did notice that there was a lot of i can't tell if the pacing of colli i wasn't crazy about the pacing of collision but i don't know if they paced it that way because battle of the belts was after and they were doing three they hours did. straight i think that's why they felt really off at the beginning like they were off cue did or they something. say why nigel wasn't there no, I didn't. Hear I anything. just heard them say because the crowd was no. at the beginning. The crowd was very loud when it first came on, and That's I heard him say he was with. He's like, I'm with Daddy Magic, and he was like, John Moxley won the tie. You know, he won the IWGP Championship. He'll be back on Wednesday. He mentioned Nigel's name, so I thought Nigel was like at the table, and they did like the card rundown. And then they were talking and like, and my editor was like, where is Nigel? And I was like, I thought he said he was there. I, all I heard was Nigel's name. So oh, I you never know what I bet happened. He did a bunch of WrestleCon uh, magic shows. Okay. I bet you he probably he took the weekend. Off. I mean, I'm not, this is a total guess. I have no idea, but in my brain now that I'm thinking about it, cause he did extra for GCW for, for the culture. And over that whole weekend, he did, Two or three different magic shows. So he may Yeah, because, you know, I did see something because I saw Kate Hensler had a picture with him because she went to his show. But I didn't know that he didn't where he was at last night. Like if he just had. And then we also had um, Darius Martin. If you missed the announcement yeah. for the show, he was not part of. I didn't realize it wasn't top flight until like they were coming out. And I was like, wait, I thought it was top flight and Matt Seidel. And then I realized that it was actually Andretti and not Darius. And Darius was getting his pilot's license. Nice. <laughs> my, my editor said top flight is a lifestyle, apparently. <laughs> that's <laughs> like, cool. So, so, yeah, that's where he was last night, which was very cool. And I so, literally want them to show up to a show. Like, I want them to, like, go to an airport and have them, like, yes. film Listen, them if landing. We get to, if we get to see Okada come to the show and his... Uh, and his and his not Kia. <laughs> yeah, right. And we can get the plane. And we're also being told that we should watch the Taiwan show and what happened with show is great. Okay, well that has definitely piqued my interest. <laughs> I've heard that I heard a couple things about the Taiwan show being good too. Yeah. So yes. I will so put it on circle, my list. We will circle circle back around to uh okay. Vincan wants to point something out. So we'll let him point something out before okay. we delve into our next topic so hurry up i'm just kidding it's it's on a delay for us um your comments and so sometimes it takes us a minute <laughs> Ooh, okay Rossi, he Rossi Rossi has a press, has a press conference, conference tomorrow. tomorrow hmm yikes wouldn't it be crazy if rossi and vince mcmahon were the ones that like because everyone's been talking about vince like trying to start a new promotion we actually had that conversation that would be it, like um, yeah, the weirdest. Like, Fri like Friday, I had that conversation actually with BJ Bethel. We were talking about it, and he was like, "Do you think that he would try to start a promotion?" I was like, "Part of me is like, yes, because he's delusional, yes, he is. and he could get Bruce Pritchard and Kevin Dunn and Brock Lesnar and Matt Riddle." <laughs> On the other hand, I'm hoping the because he's got a year before he can do anything. I'm hoping the feds like bring charges before then and we don't even have to worry about that possibility <laughs> I'm but more inclined, i mean i'm more inclined to think that he's liquidating what he's doing right now like moving that stock and doing that because he knows he's in trouble and he's moving things around to okay, have so a that feels more likely to me and then also so it's he has a plan b i mean it seems like like I don't feel like that money's going in an American bank. I feel like that money might be an going into some like offshore account. It somewhere. would not surprise me one bit. Vincent says, "Call it cancel wrestling." Yeah, right. <laughs> then they can hire. Never mind. I'm Call it not mind. woke for sure, because we can't have that. Well, then you can bring the Rock over there. Yeah, there you go. See, I'm sure he'd do a cameo. They all love Vince, so. <laughs> 
He's done. He's done so much for them, Sam. They would be nothing without that's, him. That's what I've heard. He used to have seven dollars, and now he has way more than seven dollars because of Vince McMahon. He used you. Get <laughs> it through your head. He used you to make an enormous amount of money. He's like a. I mean, he was a billionaire at, at some point. He yeah. may still be. And right. Just, come on. <laughs> David asks, how do y'all feel about Mariah and Tony Storm joining Chris Jericho? I don't see that happening at all, and I hope it doesn't. I think they're better off without Chris Jericho. I think most I everyone think a lot of people is better, better off without Chris Jericho. I, I do, too, but with the story they're telling, they, he needs to be far away from it. Um, but now we will circle back to yes. the conversation that we were going to bring up. So, Athena got to be on AEW programming. Yay! Really? Yes, it was Battle of the Belts and a lot of people don't watch Battle of the Belts, but I think that was the point because they oh, were gosh. like we'll put Athena on it, will you watch it? Yes. <laughs> so we'll, we'll give her the main, we'll give her the main event match, will you watch it? Yes, I will watch it. I did. Yes. <laughs> so Athena um got her uh, her 50th consecutive win in ROH sanctioned singles matches. So she is 50 and 0. Okay. She also is 10 well as of last night 10 days away from a 500 day reign so she's yeah she's she's definitely the longest reigning roh women's champion mm -hmm. ever um i think she's she's getting up there with like just champion roh champions in general she's she's getting up there um i'll have to check i actually have a friend who's really good with roh stats and he probably can tell me how like where she's at as far as roh title runs just in general uh but definitely for women uh and then they also seem to be setting up her i can't tell if it's gonna be her and billy versus queen Aminata and red velvet which i think is probably that'll probably be an roh well they don't have anything until death before dishonor in july so unless they do it on aw programming which Yes, please. Please put them on our which programming. Awesome. It also seems like they're going to do Queen Aminata versus Athena, which they should because Queen Aminata had an amazing tournament. Her match with Billy Starks at Supercard was phenomenal. Like she just, I, she's been so great since she's coming back. I would love to see her versus Athena. So once she reached, she's reached the 50, the 50 match milestone. She's also reached, she's getting ready to reach 500 days. So at some point, Obviously, her title reign will be coming to an end. I, uh, Vincan, I think Death Before Dishonor is generally in July, I want to say. Maybe June, but I think it's July, um, I want to say, is when it was last year. But maybe it's June. It's in that time frame. It's in the summer. Towards it's basically, the, towards it's basically the G1 quarterly. time frame. It's basically, basically, no, not even quarterly because they don't do, they only do three shows. Vincan says no pay-per-view in July. That could be, that might be why. They might, that might be where Death Before Dishonor is. So she's going to lose the title. Does she lose that the title? That would make sense if any of the ROH wrestlers are going to end up in the G1 or AW slash ROH wrestlers end up in the G1 because you couldn't have them working yeah. in either promotion here in North America because they'd have to be over. Sure. That's true. And then I don't know if anyone, I don't know if anyone. Yuda but. is Yuda is missing because right. he's injured, and mm -hmm. I don't know why he has not. They he hasn't dropped the pure title, and they haven't had an interim pure champion. But they've also brought back the premier athlete, so I feel like it's coming soon because they brought so. back Tony Nese and Josh Woods are back. They took a hiatus, and now they're back. So I have a feeling something's coming with that. Perhaps Shibata comes back because Shibata was the pure champion. They had him drop it to Yuta so that he could go back to Japan and get a visa fixed. Right. Visa obviously fixed. He's back. Still no Wheeler Yuta. <laughs> and Yuta got pulled off of the Arena Mexico show that Blackpool was on two weeks ago. He got pulled off of it because of injury. I have not heard what his injury is. I'm not sure what is happening here. It's weird because I mean when they don't talk about it, you almost always assume head or neck injury. Yeah. Like, and considering the type of the style that he does with Blackpool being a pure champion, definitely a concern. As far as just, that, I mean, usually, is, like, if it's a shoulder separation or a broken leg or something like that, yeah. they'll tell you. But right. 
he's just injured right now and that yeah i don't i haven't heard they're not talking about which is you know i get it like some things are just personal and you want to keep it and, well there's that too and I there's know. the nature of whatever the injury is maybe they want to keep it quiet um oh interesting hassan says he saw fan pictures with yuda at supercard so clearly he well at least he was there sounds okay. like he's not cleared but maybe he's still attending maybe things. he's not on his way he might be getting treatment and things like that or maybe that's interesting maybe he'll I'm glad to hear that i hope that means up. yeah he's been ven can say he's been off of tv a while he hasn't been in roh since january i think when he like or february it was like right after he had like maybe one or two title defenses after he beat shibata and then he's been gone since then then can says january 10th was his last match was that an AEW or roh um but yeah it's been a while and they haven't done anything as far as that goes um getting way off topic here but no, i was <laughs> bringing it back to athena um laron made a very good point to me on twitter which i had not thought about but now i'm very curious because he pointed out that what if athena is beating former AEW women's champions to get back onto AEW programming regularly because she was in it she took some time off and she came back at episode 50 of Honor Club and entered a feud with Nyla Rose, who was the second AEW women's champion. Mm -hmm. And she beat, she defeated her in a two out of three falls table match was, was awesome. She has also beaten. Um, wait, where was I going with that? She's also, so I don't think she's wrestled Thunder Rosa since Rosa has been back. So there's her and she's also, um, she has beaten Sheeta, obviously, at Supercard, and she does former three time women's champion. So there's those two. So perhaps, so that Riho, unfortunately, from what she says on her Instagram, she is stuck in Japan with visa issues. Visa she, issues is what I saw. She doesn't know when she's coming back. So I don't know I'm how that would affect her. If, if that's the story they're telling here, if that, how that would affect that. So, and then obviously she would be timeless Tony Storm. Um, mm -hmm. She would have to be. And then Jamie Hayter probably will not factor in because Jamie doesn't seem to be. We haven't her. heard anything about her. Yeah, I haven't heard anything from. Uh, the last I heard was she was supposed to come back in February. And obviously we are in April. Right. So I don't know how that would go. But I thought that was an, a really interesting theory. And perhaps that's what they're doing. Because at this point she has beat everybody in ROH. She has beat serena deeb which is uh not serena deeb mercedes martinez mercedes martinez was the uh the champion that she she won it from and then she has beat her again um and then vinkin says Britt baker yeah i don't know see that's the only thing i don't know how this plays in with people who are injured uh, you know is so that is, is that kind of throws a wrench Britt into baker. that is she injured is that what's wrong with her she has a back injury she has a very oh that's right injury. it's her back that's right she, she ended, ended up she, after uh, all of the crap she gave thunder rosa she ended up needing her own back yeah she has yeah she has very bad back issues she's been trying to like right. i think do what she can without surgery and then also she was taking care of adam cole when he got hurt that type of thing totally understandable because as you know back yeah. surgery is a pain in the back yeah so i think she's trying to do everything she can to I avoid blame her. back surgery but from what i understand her back from rumors i've heard i don't know how accurate they are her back is in really bad shape so I don't know that she can avoid surgery. Um, but that's Soraya has not had an, an eight. She hasn't held a title. She wasn't wait. Was she? Yes, she was for one. That's right. She, yeah, was she did. Five, You're five, right. Five, but I forgot. I'd put that out of my mind. Vinkin, damn it. <laughs> He's like, if I'm stuck remembering, so are you. Damn it. <laughs> that Thanks. is true. Thank you for all the info though. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> and and she has tweeted she tweeted recently that she hasn't wrestled in a minute so hmm. athena would have to be real careful with her <laughs> yeah though i guess athena, not that she's and she's not a dangerous wrestler no by i any was just means, gonna say that her... actually because of athena's strength and the way that she can wrestle i bet she could actually take pretty good oh i think she could be very that safe. might actually I be she would have really to smart She'd have to tone it down a bit because she's so definitely she gets really, which I love about her. No, I, I love, love it. I thought it was her. And so awesome. I think with, I just she is so in the ring strong with Soraya, and she amazing. Might have to dial it back a bit. 
but I, I could see really that. Being, like it. I could see Soraya being one of the people she faces next. And then it's because some people have wanted to see if Athena be... wrestle Suzuki next. Please. Because <laughs> she is like one. tough enough to do it, man. She, she is. is like, yeah, she's, she she's legit. Like, I want to see, I would love to see her wrestle Masha Slimovich. Oh, man, that would be a. For, that would fight. be, I, and I really want to see her wrestle Jody Threat again, Ooh. because that's who kind of kicked off this whole version of Athena, and they haven't wrestled in a couple in a while. Like I'd like to see this version of Athena versus, and Jody has gotten better, and so I'd like to see. Like awesome. I think that would be a fun match, but yeah, I. So that is an interesting theory that Laron has, and I would not. They could potentially make that last for a while. I don't, could they make it last to July? depends on injuries maybe may uh so that's i like and the it idea. does set her up to be a really good challenger for mercedes because that's a strong she's that's so a strong that a lot her... of people want is mercedes versus athena i have seen i mean it lot. kind of it almost when you start to think about the if mercedes is healthy and wrestling the way that she can and athena is right. continuing to do i mean she is obviously the goat of roh like everybody loves her she's it makes sense that like if and if Laurent's theory is right which that's a great way to do it because it's a very subtle like I just went and beat all the women's champions on these yeah. shows people are getting a picture of Athena on the tv show now I mean that yeah almost makes sense because she's Mercedes is going to need a comparable star right to fight mm -hmm. it can't just be Agreed. anybody and it's no offense to the rest of the women's division but there's very few other people you can really like that I want. And personally that I want to see a program with. Yeah. And if they're doing more of, the I don't want to see your fight, Soraya, please. <laughs> I would. Yeah. I would. If we have to, for story, for this theory to work, then fine. Well, no, if she but fights her for that, that's fine. I just don't want to see like Mercedes and Soraya. It, no. I have no interest in. That's not a program. Oh, Mercedes. I, want to I was thinking of Athena. No, Mercedes versus Soraya will happen because they are friends. Soraya is the one who was in the ring with her when she All was right. injured. Oh, that's right. I forgot that the connection that everybody no, blamed. No, her I, for that match that. will happen at some point. Yeah, you're right. I feel like that, and that match is happening. I was thinking of Athena versus Soraya, but yeah, you're no, right. Mercedes, Mercedes versus Soraya will happen at some point because of their story because yeah, right. she was in the. Soraya was the one who was in the ring with her the night that the injury happened and she was told she was never going to wrestle again. That yeah. So they have that connection. So You're right. You're right. Yeah. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I really, I like that Athena, that thing. And like Athena's other nickname is the American Joshi. And so she, that's why she wrestled. Part of the reason Sheeta was like, well, I'm a real Joshi. So <laughs> let's get down here. So I, I can see if we're bringing, and she wants, Athena keeps saying she wants to go to Japan. And she Good. told Tony, if you're not going to send me to Japan, bring them to me, which it seems like they're doing some mm -hmm. of that and they could be doing more of that. So I would like to see her on AW though. Like she's at this point, she's getting to the point where she has, there's not much else she can do in ROH. She's got the 50th win. She's closing in on 500 days. She's beaten pretty much everybody there is to beat. So I do like the idea of her having to be all of her beating all of eight, not having to, but beating all of AEW's former women's champions to prove that she should be on the main roster. I like that story. And I don't know how injuries will play into that though. So that could, cause yeah, the Britt Baker thing and obviously Jamie Hayter, that could be right now. The only person that has left is Queen Aminata, <laughs> but I think she's, I feel like she's, unless you bring Trisha Dora and more. Yeah, she's because she's beaten her. She's beaten Willow like three yeah, times. Well, you're right. she's beaten Willow several times. Yeah, you're Willow, right. Willow beat her uh, in the Owen, but that was not an ROH sanction match. So that's how they kept the streak going. Um. So. Yeah, she's. Yeah, I don't know everyone, but yeah, she's getting. So the close. AEW women's roster would make sense because there is no there literally unless it's the start of women. There's nobody left for her pretty much. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. Unless she continues the proving ground matches against indie women, which she has done a lot of proving ground matches against women from the indies as well. So there's that as well. Nice. But I like that theory. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna talk about that. <laughs> and then I think our last topic is uh the Ashe show is this Friday, as we mentioned earlier, uh on the stream when I was talking about Sunny Kiss. Um, so it's this Friday. 
live stream tickets go on sale tomorrow and you can go to a uh, ashe wrestling.com and um, from there you go to buy tickets and then it'll just read it'll just direct you every step of the way from that <clears throat> the show will be $15 that's what it that's usually what it is every month it is well worth your $15 just I'm a little bit biased but I've been, <laughs> I've been to the shows and they are they are well worth your $15 at least in my opinion and so I will um we did get well, I was gonna say do you want me to do it or you gonna do it? Yeah. Okay. this is not good was not kind of stretched out a lot and you can't see some of it i don't know if uh, we, can we can we make it bigger or no here let me see what i got going nope that's too small that's too big that's different that's... so i was trying to do the one that was easier that had like dang, had on, the let's see if, uh, dang it or... <laughs> damn you small so i should have done what i had i had the individual ones and right, I was i'm like, just oh, gonna keep doing this one. here we go My <laughs> anyway, at least you wrote them down. The first, the first, yeah, some of these are hard to see because they're cut off at the top. Sorry about that. That was that's fine. That's my fault because I didn't, I did not. Everyone, uh, I should have just done individual slides. I was like, oh, it's all right here on these two pictures. I'll just do that and backfired. But okay. <laughs> so I do have the match list that we'll do real quick. Uh, so Let's Kevin Knight uh, is making his return. Kevin Knight was on the first Ashe show. Uh, and he is facing movie Mike and I have this <laughs> movie Mike on, if you saw Ashe too, you would have seen that movie Mike, um, was running his mouth. He was wrestling fast as hell, Ian Maxwell and, uh, forgot that Ian Maxwell is very fast and he lost in like 30 seconds. <laughs> So when this match was announced, I tweeted and I quote tweeted it and said, hopefully this match lasts longer than 30 seconds. And Ashe responded and said, that was shady. Ah! I was like, I mean, I wasn't trying to be shady. I was just saying, like, yes, hopefully it's longer than 30 seconds. And then movie Mike responded with a that gif of Cam Newton where he's sitting on the bench and he just kind of like slides down. <laughs> the bench that's so <laughs> awesome <laughs> so i and i also hope it lasts longer than 30 seconds because i like both of them and i would like to see a full match between kevin knight and movie mike but also i just i thought that was really funny so um so yeah looking forward to that one uh then we've got uh trevor aeon versus ashton star versus owen knight so if you saw the first Ashe show, um, you will know that they were in Team Georgia when they did Team Georgia versus Tor Team North Carolina. Um, Ashton is still salty about them losing that match. He blames Trevor uh, for that. And so that's how he got roped into this. And then Owen mm, also. Um, so they're all they're all three salty about that. <laughs> <laughs> so they will be on. Uh, so they will be having a, a triple threat. Um, then we have for <clears throat> the women, we have two women debuting. Uh, Promise Braxton is wrestling Tootie Lynn. Um, Tootie Lynn, I have seen a handful of times and she's great. I'm so excited that Tootie is going to be on this card. If you watch the Empower show that Mickey James did with... Um, with TNA a few years ago, Tootie was one of the women who was on there, which I had seen her before then, but that's where she like a lot of, she got a lot of attention being on that show and she wrestles in St. Louis. Um, she's wrestled. I think she did dark and elevation a couple of times. And I want to say she's done ROH and then promise Braxton has done. I've, I've no, I've seen a few of her matches on one of the, the YouTube shows. And then I have seen her on ROH as well. So I'm really looking forward to seeing both of them. I'm excited that they're bringing in new women, which is always fun. Um, there's a tag match. That's uh, culture Inc versus Saeed, Sa Saeed Al Sabah and Treehouse Lee. I haven't seen Treehouse Lee wrestle in several years. He used to wrestle uh, around here. And then I think he like took a sabbatical for a while and just was not wrestling anywhere. And so I'm really, I was so hyped to see his name. Like my whole, our whole group chat. were like, Oh my God, Treehouse Lee. So <laughs> we're all very excited to see him. Uh, Saeed was somebody I've watched wrestle for a while. He was in PWX for a long time um, and he's fantastic. So he and Treehouse are going to be great. I, ha I think I've seen culture Inc. I feel like I've seen them on something. I've heard a lot of people are really excited about them being on this card. And I've heard a lot of people saying that if you're not familiar with them, this should be a really good 
um, a really good show. <laughs> Nikki points out that Ashton shaded. Yeah. Yeah. Ashton cut a promo and was shading Trevor, but in the process also shaded. Yeah. I don't know if that was <laughs> the intent, but it was like, you was like, you lost the yacht. I was like, Whoa, wait a minute. Now what do y'all y'all do here? How are you hey now? Like, he was like, yes, but what did I do? That's yeah. He's like, I'm just over here. <laughs> Bottom my business. This is Friday, right? Yeah, this is on Friday. And speaking right. of you, yeah, 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 we'll do. Be, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, will actually, he's going to be making an appearance. So, yeah. I don't know. He, yeah. he will be with Rayhan Anteus. Uh, Rayhan was on the first show. He was in uh, Team North Carolina as well. Okay. Was, I, yeah. Yeah, he wasn't at or he wasn't on the card for Ashe, too. He was there, though. He was like walking around and stuff because I saw him. But, um, Back to the matches. Uh, so we also have this one should be fun. So Kiara Hogan was on the first Ashe show and she cheated to beat Charity King. And so um, on the last show, Charity King brought in Danny B, who is her tag team partners. They her, her tag team partner. They are the NWA women's tag team champions. They won um, right around the last Ashe show and they are killing it in the like on the Texas indie scene. Um, I got to interview them. They are really awesome women. They put on great matches. I really have become a King B fan. And I think that everybody should check out what they're doing. So Danny is uh, going to try to get a little bit of revenge on Kiera uh, for what she did to charity on Ashe one. So I like some of this. Ashe has got some, now that we're getting some story not line advancements through the, through the shows there's been. And so that's a really cool thing that they're kind of calling back stuff. And then also um, because the, for the culture, which we talked about last, uh, last, well, it's technically Friday morning. <laughs> it was yeah. like a, or no, a Friday night, so it was Saturday morning, it was like 11.59 p.m. that they did the For the Culture show, and the main event was Billy Dixon versus Darius Carter with Darius Lockhart as the special guest referee. Um, back, if you go back to Ashe 1, Billy Dixon was supposed to wrestle on Ashe 2. Um, Darius Carter was, uh, he did some interference. He was being a jerk. He's very good at being a jerk. He pushed sure is. Very he pushed Darius as like one of his, like a former teacher. It was a teacher and he like hurt his leg. Mm -hmm. And so Darius, that set up Darius Carter versus Darius Lockhart at Ashe too. So this has kind of spilled over now into for the culture. And unfortunately Darius Carter picked up the win for the culture and Billy Dixon is not too happy about that. Uh -oh. um, so we've got some, we got some stuff coming from that. So, the sh so Sunny Kiss was also at For the Culture, saw what happened, had some things to say in a backstage comment, was like, Darius Carter is a jerk and is an asshole, and I'm not going to put up with it, and somebody needs to put him in his place, and she challenged Darius Carter uh, for, for Friday. But then, on top of that, Billy Dixon will be making an, his in-ring debut on mm. Friday. The, and he said he's got to address his future in wrestling, because Billy Dixon... It took some time. I think he, I don't remember if he used the term retired or if he just kind of took some time off and then he came back recently and then he's upset with, with what happened at for the culture. So Friday is going to be really interesting. We don't know who he is wrestling yet. And Darius cool. Lockhart doesn't have a match. So I don't know if, <laughs> I don't Ooh. know if he's going to try to wrestle Darius Lockhart or if he's going to take out his anger on somebody else. So I mean, be deep with, with Darius Carter, so you never <laughs> yes. know. You could, you could get involved. You could, yes. you could get involved. And then, yes, he could. And then fast as hell, Ian Axwell that I mentioned that he uh, beat Moving Mike in 30 seconds, he also is scheduled to appear. So we will see cool. what happens with that. There's also going to be a live performance from Quentin Talley and the Soul Provider. So they will, if you've watched, if you haven't seen an Ashe show yet, they do a live performance uh, half an hour before the match starts. So I think I want to say, wait, if that one, I believe that they go on air at 7 30, and that um, that's when Quentin will perform, and then Bell starts at eight o'clock. And the I theme believe. is Cosmos, and I was reading about it, and I was super excited because I actually would have stuff to wear it because they were encouraging people to, <laughs> yeah, like, that's dress really with the theme, which I was, and I was like, ooh, I have, I, well, now I have this hat, yeah. even. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I could have, but now I have. 
a hat to go with it, but I have like a bunch of fun alien themed and That's so cool. space themed. I, I mean, obviously, as a dork and a Ren Fair, <laughs> we have lots of stuff that we can like theme it. I was like, darn it. One of these days I'm coming to visit you for one of these shows. Please, please do. Yeah, because that's funny. I have so many friends in Charlotte now. <clears throat> like I have, have to come. I, too many people I like, and there's too much good wrestling. So I need to make a trip yes. to you guys. You should. You I've should. been to and the other side of your state, but not really that side <laughs> of your state. Right. I've been to the, I've been to the coast of your state. Yes. Mostly, I understand. <laughs> I, I've been to the touristy parts. Okay, just Listen, say it. That's okay. A lot of people. That's what they do. That's fine. It's beautiful. <laughs> But, <clears throat> it is i have to agree but it ashe it was interesting when he first announced the cosmo show and was saying that he was encouraging people to dress up but then he was like don't go i don't remember if he said don't go full on beyonce or don't wear so he made a con i can't remember exact comment he's like i mean do you but i guess next month is also themed and he was like don't wear it for this show when you could you might need it for the right. next show <laughs> and so i was don't. actually trying to decide um, cause I was like, well, I have a couple shirts that I could wear for a Cosmos theme, but also I got so, for wrestling wind down. She has those, uh, bad bitches shirts. And I Ooh. finally got the customized bad bitches shirt that I have not revealed yet. And I was planning to wear Yay. it to this show Friday, but then I was like, but then it won't be themed. So I was like, do I go with the Cosmos theme or do I go with the bad bitches shirt? <laughs> so you could I wear have, the bad bitches shirt and like I don't know. If I you had, I don't have, have, really have with, like shirts. I was like, I don't have like sh I don't have shorts that I think could go with the Cosmos like, vibe. Do you have anything with like stars on it or something? I, a shirt with I have a shirt with stars oh, okay. on it. And that's what I was thinking of wearing. But I have another shirt that might also work for the Cosmos theme. But then I was like, well, I don't know what the theme of next month is. So do I right. save the star shirt for next month and there then go. go with the with bad, the bad bitch bitch shirt? shirt? Or, yeah, so these are questions I mean, that I have. that is an out of this world shirt. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See, that's what you can tell people. You'd be like, this shirt is out of this world. It's definitely on point. <laughs> this is true. The, the See? There we go. That'll work. <laughs> I helped you out. I totally. That's theme. You did. You did. I can't wait to you. see it though. You got to take a picture because that's really exciting. Yeah. And I told I, I told Lo I was like I've ordered it. But I mean I've got it. I wanted her to know that it arrived, but I was not. I was saving the reveal. <laughs> now nice. I'm like, wait a minute. Do I have to save the reveal even longer? Because Title Belt has a show next month. They're Ooh. coming back, and I was like, could wear it there. It's a highly so, repeatable shirt, though, too. It is a highly repeatable shirt, though. And Nikki has a new shirt that she can wear. Aww. So we're trying to figure out if we're going with a theme or not. And then also, I'm going to be doing interviews. So I was like, do I want to do the interviews in, in the... my bad bitches shirt? <laughs> I mean, they will appreciate it, I I'm think. I'm sure. I think they will. That's However, the right crowd. <laughs> I was like, should I go with the Cosmos themed shirt? Because I'll be interviewing some talent. Yeah. We shall see. I will let you know on Sunday. Or yeah. perhaps if you were watching the hey, show on Friday, I will. We be have an Instagram. Instagram. You could post it to our Instagram. I this is true. And also, I will be sitting front row. So you may, oh. I think we're opposite hard cam. So you might be able to see me. So then you might know on Make Friday. Sure you follow <laughs> my tickets to Ashe Wrestling to see what shirts he wears. <laughs> and also stay for the good wrestling. <laughs> Go to the show or stream it like I have to because yeah. I don't. If you are there. in the Charlotte area, it is at the Cabarrus Arena, which I have seen many a wrestling shows. <laughs> I've seen cool. bit of PWX ran there a lot. ROH has before they were bought by uh, when they were Sinclair ROH, they were they were there a lot. I've seen, I've seen quite a, I've seen a GCW awesome. both time GCW has has come has been at this cool. venue. So there's a lot of good wrestling stuff over there. So if you're in I the like area, that they're doing different venues every time. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I, yeah. I like that too. And I think, yeah, I don't know where next month's is going to be, I'm but so yeah. I'm so excited. Really they're doing a third one. This is amazing. Like yes. when we had them on, they were just starting out and they were just doing the thing. This is their third show. No, I'm very it's excited. It's taking for them. off. Like it's happening and people outside. So many people that like that keep showing up at the show and they're like so behind it and they're like, wow, what Darius is doing here. And he's great. I mean, yeah. I, 
I hope we can, like, I know they're super busy because of all of this, but I hope we can get them back on as things have progressed to kind of get a little bit of, like, how you feeling after show number right. five or six or something. Yeah, and I'd like to have them on, especially because, like, we talked about when they did the the second show was the Black the the Black History Month show. Right. And so they brought in, they had Rod Simmons and Teddy Long involved, which was really cool. And then they had, but, like, like, the this- first show, they had, like, Paul White and people, like, showed up off the cuff they like realized what was going on and they were like i want to record something for this and send it because i can't be there i love that i love that like there's this all this like big name talent out there that are paying attention it's they're getting yeah the i mean they had they aja should. kong on there they had aja yeah. kong on their yeah. first show yeah. which is still i just i'm so glad gl- it's such a good vibe <laughs> it's exactly what we need in the Agreed. wrestling space it's so positive compared to some of the things that are out there that it's like a great counterbalance. Uh, yeah, it's as definitely and the people involved seem to really just be glad to be a part of it mm-hmm. in any way. Yeah, they that's can. kind of the that's what I got like from the the people that I have been able to interview, um, especially like the last show I got to interview Sunny Kiss yeah, and right. the King Bees and uh, yeah, yeah, and that's we talked. That's kind of what we talked about was like, what does having a platform like Ashe mean, especially for black talent which don't necessarily always have these type of platforms and they've had to build these platforms for themselves and um which is really cool and then it's just not even of course that you you know you have the black wrestling and black talent which is incredible but you just they're just such wonderful like every like i just love being involved with it and like that's what i was talking to chris about so you know chris obviously came on talked to us before ashe too and i was just like i just like being a part of like I like I love the idea of it I love the people involved and I was like if I can use my tiny platform to push it in any Definitely. way I will I will do it whether it's you know it's podcast through writing doing the interviews and stuff like I just I really believe in it and so I will keep talking about it and I will keep pushing it because I want people to enjoy it and I feel like it's I know that sometimes $15 is $15 can be a lot in some months. I know the economy is shit. <laughs> and I know that you have other things, but if you have, if you've got the 15 bucks to spend, I would highly recommend buying this show. I think it, I think it's worth it. I think you'll get your money's worth out of it. Make sure that you do follow them on YouTube. They put up so much content. I don't have their it. YouTube, unfortunately. It's a uh, Ashe video. wrestling. So as soon as you're done with this, but show, if you go, go on to any of the other stuff, even if you go yeah. to Ashe wrestling.com <clears throat> that I've got up here on the screen, um, it links you right to all their socials, including their, right. The YouTube is like right there. So just yeah, and they post some to of it to they post some of it to their other social media, and then you can see like the whole thing. But like they Plus and they, they have little episodes that um are yeah. things like that are billed and backstage yeah they put the pro, they put the promos they up they stuff have on there yeah they've got like the top five like um the King Bees just did like their top five uh, I think it was their top five women's wrestlers or something like that and they've done like they've they've done the uh, what's in my bag and like what they always keep in their bags with them and they do like these fun little things like that so that I you like get to know lot. the talent on top of it which i think is really cool like they're putting out a lot of really great content um on top of the wrestling which is because obviously the wrestling is at the forefront but then they have this you know they're building these other things up to put and they're putting out content like they have a thing because it's a cosmos theme they're doing uh they put it together a video it's like white noise for like I think it's like a four hour video of yeah, white noise and it's like the cause because if you've seen the cosmos um like the the uh they've got like the moving graphics and things yeah. but they've got they've got like it looks like you're in space and so they've got like a four hour video of that which is really cool because I actually it was used- always it was like my first favorite sa- screensaver was the stars the dumbest one ever it was because yes. literally like the very first one was <laughs> right. a black screen with little pixelated uh-huh. dots but yes. I didn't care and then I figured out if you got into the like bios and stuff, you could actually speed up the stars or slow them down or like, yeah. And so, I, and I mean, I know they're way more advanced now and I probably like them even more, but I <laughs> yeah. just think it's like, that is a space is a cool, like that's what one of my, I mean, I want to be an used- astronaut for most of my life. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, that's you know, so cool. unfortunately I'm not tall enough to fly anything. Damn it. <laughs> I don't short people problems. <laughs> 
short people problems, which totally. I also know about those. <laughs> so unfortunately, yeah, uh, there's height requirements for flying jets and uh, so Damn forth. Them. So gravity and all that yeah. shit. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm really, really looking forward to Friday. I have not heard we are we're finalizing interview stuff, so I probably won't know until a couple of days from now. Like but last I time. Will, That's okay. Yes, but I I was gonna say I'll try to post to um Power Bombshells uh social media but the the internet sucks that's one of the one things about that's one of the things about this uh that location is their internet's not always great i mean i think it'll be fine as far as like the show airing and things like that but as far as like sending tweets and things like that it's not always the greatest <laughs> they need to, it's like please improve that right yeah, you can I'm take really, pictures and show them later we i can will show them. We can, I mean, and anything that you like, we can put up next week when we talk about the show. Because obviously, I am going to be watching it. Bob's out of town for a work thing, so it'll be something to fill my time. It's nice. There you go. That's awesome. I, yes. I, I had totally forgotten until I went into our notes, and I was like, "That's right, Asha. It's this week I have things to do. I can binge all the. the <laughs> I have to catch up on all these. I'm just going to binge all the matches that I need to catch up on from the last weekend that I didn't catch on the mm -hmm. weekend, and then I can watch Asha." Yeah, gonna be my wrestling week. There you go. Yeah, I'm really excited. Wrestling's about gonna keep me company. Yeah. It will nice. keep you company. And then on Sunday, we will be here for, yeah. and as Nikki and I have been calling it, is Dynasty because Dynasty. when I was I was on when I went to I was on the Rock Boat, which is a music cruise. I was on it like a really long time ago, like more than a decade ago. And one of that the sounds it was like a, one of the carnival, like, cause you know, everything's like all the rooms are named. And so one of them was Di dynasty. And so sister Hazel is the band that is behind the rock boat. Like it was their fruit. That was their, oh, their really? Oh, idea. that's hilarious. So I remember sister, them. Yeah. So sister Hazel is behind the rock boat and they bring on all these artists and it's just like I, that's how I saw Zach Brown band before they got famous because I saw them on the rock boat like four times. Then I saw them, they played here. They played at a bar here. I saw them. I went to a college to see it. Like Zach Brown was like really underground stuff for a while. Like that's they were hilarious. just like stuff they were doing. Love that. Like they put on an amazing live show. And so there's, and then bands like they would have scheduled concerts. And then because they're artists, they would just like randomly pop up and be playing. Yeah, like, right. of course, there's, of course, there's like casinos and stuff. And so they'd be like, some of them would be playing like outside the casinos and just like doing, or there would be artists who weren't booked. And that's what they would do is they would come play like their music and like sell their CDs and stuff. But right. <laughs> one of the, one of the lounges was called the dynasty, but one of the guys from sister Hazel would call it the dynasty. And so I have called it that forever. Like, that's just what I call it now. And so when I read it, I don't, so that's what Nikki and I have been calling it dynasty. Like that's every so that's cute. I love stuff like that where it's like something. <laughs> so that's like if you are coming for the dynasty, like, oh, we have a pay-per-view that fits with one of our personal jokes now. <laughs> yes. I saw it. I was like, Oh my God, it's called the dynasty. It's called AW dynasty. <laughs> Is this now. is where you should put this is where you should put your meat match. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this with me. I can have it forever. Now, yes, you're all part AW of AW Dynasty. Now. AW Dynasty. This is where in the future somebody please tell Tony Khan to put the meat match on, on Dynasty. Dynasty. On Dynasty. And we will uh, be yes. <laughs> we have so a special Sunday. announcement about that. Yes, we do have a special announcement, which is actually why we were a few minutes late because we were talking about Dynasty and the uh, our pre-pre show. We, of course, we love our pre-pre shows. Uh, Garrett loves our pre-pre show. Garrett so really loves want to make sure he does. So we wanted to make sure that we would be here. However, Sonny's brother's birthday is also next Sunday, and we found out earlier this week when his birthday party would be. And his birthday party is between our show and Dynasty. <laughs> his birthday party is at. Um, four o'clock and so we were like we tend to talk a lot clearly what? um and so what? we were trying to figure out like how do we like we need to make like i was like i have to make sure that i'm done by no later than three if we can get out of here at 245 even better because i gotta get it's at a park and the park has terrible parking and it's probably going to be nice weather and it's going to be hard to to find parking so it's like um, trying to figure out. So I talked with Mel and our plan is that we're just going to go an hour early next week. And so instead of our regular one o'clock start time, so please ignore Darius. We will not be here at one o'clock. We will be here 
at 12 o'clock Eastern Well, we'll time. be playing that at 12 o'clock, so it won't make a difference. And if this you just play, I mean, we don't, we can play the other one if we have to, not to confuse you all. Yeah. <laughs> but they'll be tuning in at 12 and they'll be like, wait, but it's okay. Cause your time, tra just think of it as time traveling. Yes. You're and like us. Mel pointed out, this would probably be better for our UK friends and our, our friends who are in, or, uh, and who are in the future. Uh, right. <laughs> watching us because we're not going to work better for you guys. Dinner. Hopefully, it's not during your dinner time or something like that. But yeah, we are planning, so, and we'll we'll tweet reminders. Uh, yep. But we plan to be here. And Hassan, if your notifications are not working, we will be here at noon next Sunday instead of one because we want to make sure that we have time to talk about zero hour and uh, dynasty. <laughs> and we need and and Sam Jeff and Sam and Nikki definitely need to be at that party and have yeah. fun their family we right now. Sure. So, and we'll talk obviously. about Ashe a little bit too um and how that goes and so I'm sure we'll yeah, talk right. about Yeah, right. Yeah, we'll bring that we'll up. We'll definitely we'll... follow up on that cuz that'll be so we want to make sure that's kind of we moved we moved it back so we would have enough time to do what we do and get Sam and yeah. Nikki where they need to be with their family yeah. and yeah we definitely wanted to make I mean we would have been there for him anyway but obviously with no everything that's happened you guys we want to we want to make sure we're there to su to support him um Hassan said uh can't wait thanks for the stream thanks for being here we appreciate yeah, that we really appreciate you guys hanging out with us and the questions are so great it's really fun to talk to you guys that's another reason we wanted to make sure we had time. Yeah, because I was like, I'm sure you're all, and if you guys, are, of course, we want you to weigh in with your match predictions, too. And so that always makes it more fun when you guys weigh in with like what you think is going to happen and stuff like that. It's always we enjoy that. And so we wanted to make sure that we weren't rushed because we, we could we could quickly go down a time just kind of like I did with Ashe, or just yeah, kind of went down it, which we could, but it's it's not as fun. And so and we'll, it's a new pay-per-view. So we're going to try and get it. We, we yeah. get it all done. We get a balance. Get a yes. good balance next week. So this, yes. but we like Sam said, we'll we'll make sure we remind you all week because yeah. we'll have to remind ourselves probably too. <laughs> this is true. We are gonna have to remind ourselves. So it'll and just Nikki, be a good way to remind ourselves. Yes. What did she say now? Nikki said, "Is it is it massacre?" Yes, because we say massacre instead of massacre because then ready to rumble. Um, That's okay. I, he I calls, it, he calls it, it massacre. I say jalapeno and tortilla once in a while. I'm not going to yes, sit here and lie. Yes, definitely. But yes, I'm a, I is like. I one. think it's funny to pronounce words phonetically sometimes. <laughs> so there we are. It's entertaining. We so live in a multicultural have... country, like so. It's fun Fair. to mess around with it. I make fun of my own words. I make fun of other people's words. It's all in good fun. Yes, yeah, so and now you have a new one to add to your lexicon with Dynasty. Correct. I do. I'm very excited about it. <laughs> you that. all are welcome to now use Dynasty. And even if you don't want to, that's probably what you're gonna think now. So you're welcome for that. You're welcome. Or or I'm sorry. <laughs> Whichever one applies. I don't think you should apologize. <laughs> uh, I think all right. it, go ahead. Yeah, it's good. I think we're good. I think that's I think we covered everything. We got through it. Thank you guys for and thanks for hanging out with our non-wrestling talk. Hopefully that didn't make people be like, I thought they were gonna talk about Triple H. Why I don't know. They, they were like voting for us to do that the whole time. So <laughs> even though we did have a request to not talk about wrestling. Yeah, so <laughs> which maybe is also maybe appreciated. We'll, one day we'll do a shoot the shoot the BS. We've episode. talked, yeah, we've talked about doing that. Maybe we should do that one day where we maybe just we'll talk about it. not anything but wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> We can have we that's what we will call the show anything but wrestling. Anything but wrestling. <laughs> but yeah, so don't forget we'll be here next week at noon and we will we will send out posts on social media to to remind you and we hope that you can join us live and we hope you have a good week. Yes, have a good week and thank you so much.